Dear Sam, it was not easy for me to find fitting words for these first lines that I hope you are reading, as well as it was not easy to find out where you were living. I hope that my letter will reach your hands as soon as possible, as there is not much time left. Since your departure, I have contributed all my efforts and endless hours of sleepless nights looking for the truth about our family. I feel that I am already very close to beholding its full face, and I am concerned that I might not have the strength to look at it alone. Therefore, I am turning to you, Samuel, for I know that you will hear out my plea. In this envelope, you will find the ancient ring of our heritage. It is very important that you always have it with you. Take extraordinary care of it. Please return to our manor and help me. I know my time is closing in. I can feel it. I am afraid. After the funeral, we jointly returned to Black Mirror. The journey through the desolate countryside seemed endless. No one spoke a single word. When our glances met, they were full of deep sorrow. It wasn't merely grief, however, that was in our eyes. It was also a certain alienation that Victoria and Robert felt towards me. My unexpected return after more than 12 years gave them the freedom to ask all kinds of unspoken questions. I am truly sorry about what happened. Thank you, Heinz. I don't know what else I should say. William was everything to me, and now... You need not say anything, Victoria. Today is a sad day for all of us. I think I will leave you alone now, if you will excuse me. You don't have to go. You are a good friend to us, as you were to William. I value your words, but I think I had better go now. Please be our guest, I beg you. I would be happy to, if that is your wish. I would like to skim through certain volumes in your library, if you would not mind them. No, not at all. Thank you. I will be in the library. Bates, should Heinz need anything, please be of help to him. Of course. You can rely on that, madam. I do not want to sound harsh, but I think we should leave you alone. You are empathic as usual, Robert. I want to be alone with my thoughts for a while. That is quite understandable. Samuel. Would you see me to my study? Yes, gladly. Oh, Samuel, please stay. I'd like a word with you. Certainly. Will you excuse me, Robert? We will talk later. I will be in my study. Samuel, tell me, have you returned to stay with us for good? To tell the truth, I haven't decided yet. Give me some more time, please. Don't forget, we are still your family. You are a Gordon, and you belong here just like all the other Gordons before you. Yes, I am well aware of that, but I need to put my thoughts in order. Perhaps then I'll be able to answer your question. 
Oh well. I hoped you'd say yes. I'm not feeling well. Please excuse me now, Samuel. Of course. I will go to my room. Sir, I took the liberty to clean up your room. I believe you will be satisfied with the results. Here is the key. Your suitcase is already in the room. Thank you, Bates. Victoria wants me to stay. Maybe I should have promised I would. But I haven't made up my mind yet. Maybe later. Bates has readied my room. I should go have a look. Marcus Gordon, the younger of the two brothers that began our dynasty. founding stone of the original castle that Marcus and Mordred jointly laid in 1206. It's made of a single piece of some strange stone, charged with a peculiar kind of energy, as William would say. The atmosphere of centuries, long gone, can be felt around it. Idea what I'd be looking for in there. Jennifer, the wife of Tobias Gordon. Robert didn't have lunch with us. He just had something brought in here. Today's paper. I'll have a look. Hmm. There seems to be a note of some sort inside. Robert, I have only now received have your only letter. I have only now received your letter. That permanently drunken goof whom you have paid to be the messenger brought it late. I will take care of your parcel as usual. Do not worry. Fortunately, no one cares about anything in this godforsaken place. P.S. I suggest you give more money to that blockhead Mark next time. Maybe it will help him be more tardy. I'll put it back so that Robert finds it where it's supposed to be. William's morning card. The key to my room. I used to play chess here with William. I remember him teaching me my first moves, as if it were today. The door is locked. Bates gave me his key. I can open it. This place hasn't changed at all, as though I were only away for a few days. Welcome home, Samuel. Catherine would comb her beautiful hair in front of it every morning. It's best not remembered. collection of old pictures. I don't want to remember that time. I'll leave it alone.
Forgive me, Catherine. Hmm. It's locked. I only had a couple of things and an old camera in it as far as I recall. But where did I keep the key? I'll have a look around the room. It has to be here somewhere. I'll try reaching up there. There is something there. The key to my drawer. I knew it had to be somewhere in the room. They're too old to be used. My holy Bible. I have no need to take pictures of anything. An old painting. I don't know who its author was. It's cold in here. I'll tell Bates to light up the fireplace. I only have a few necessities in it. I'll take the pills in case my head starts to ache again. I'll surely need the wallet. I can't see anything interesting. There are some coins in it. Robert, may I speak with you for a moment? Of course. I'd be happy to speak to you. We haven't seen each other for such a long time. How many years has it been? Twelve, maybe more. A long time indeed. I am happy that you have returned. I have not come to stay. I came only to be here for William's funeral. Really? That's a pity. I thought you would stay with us for a few months at least. Maybe you can still change your mind. So, what do you want to talk about? What do you think about what happened to William? That is a strange question. What should I think about it? I don't believe it was an accident, let alone suicide. I am afraid you are jumping to conclusions, Samuel. You don't happen to think it was a murder, do you? No. But really, who would want to kill themselves in the autumn of their life? William was a very old man. Look, William was alone in the tower when it happened, and the door was locked from the inside. So a stranger's intervention is impossible. So why didn't he leave a letter? That I do not know, and I do not even want to think about it. I'm trying hard to get my thoughts away from William's death, and I absolutely don't feel like talking about it. How is it possible that Robert is not at all interested in this? Am I the only one who wants to know the truth of what happened to William? The castle is falling into disrepair. How long can it last like this? It has been standing here for hundreds of years, and it is not going to decay any time soon. It will outlive us, just as it has outlived our ancestors. But the old wing is on the verge of falling down. It was already on the verge of falling apart when I was born. Yet, it still stands. Why hasn't anyone tried to restore it? Oh, sure they have. About a hundred years ago, Werner Gordon attempted to repair it. Why are you saying attempted? Well, he was not the first one who tried it. 
the new structure never lasted more than a couple of years. The original castle foundations that Marcus and Mordred jointly laid are within those walls. It's as though the old stones do not want to accept the new ones. Strange, indeed. So what has been happening around here since I've been away? Hmm. Things are rather odd, but I have no recollection of anything special. Are there any new families? No, I do not believe so. In fact, the only person to have moved here is Dr. Herman. We also have a different groom and a different gardener than the ones you knew. I've been away for 12 years, and all that has happened is that we have two new servants. Well, no one is clamoring to live around here. You know that yourself. Yes, nothing really has changed. It's almost scary. I must go now. Right then. I'll return to my work. William had his study behind those windows. If I want to find out what actually happened, I must get inside somehow. I hoped I'd never have to return here. I'll never forgive myself for Catherine's death, for which I was responsible. It should have been me that ended up in the flames, not her. This one is long retired. It's made of black marble. There's nothing in it, just dust. It's destroyed like the rest of the room because of the unfortunate fire many years ago. This place is making me remember all those horrible events. The canvas has been entirely destroyed by the flames. Just ashes. Something is glittering in the ashes. The remnants of a torn up photograph I've never seen this face before, but who could have thrown the picture in that fireplace? And why did they take care to tear it up first? The door is locked.
William would often sit here reading the paper. That was a very long time ago, though. The fire has to be maintained in winter as well as summer. Otherwise, it's very cold in here. Our family's coat of arms. It has been symbolizing our noble rights since the Middle Ages. Mordred Gordon, the heartless ruler of the Dark Ages of our history. His rule was ended by his own brother Marcus in 1213. Glad you have returned, sir. We have kept your room intact. It's exactly as it was when you left. Very nice. Thank you. If you would like to have it straightened or anything else, just tell me. That won't be necessary. It happened so suddenly. I didn't have time to write that I was coming. I would be happy to help you with anything. Thank you. I'll be fine. Do you need anything else, sir? I have spoken to Robert. It seems to me he may not be feeling well. It is probably due to his responsibilities at Ashbury. Lately it seems to really exhaust him. He has recently taken to spending most of his time at work, often not even returning home for the night. He usually arrives in the evening, locks himself in his study, and works late into the night. He won't even let me in. He may just not want to be disturbed. Maybe. But he would never do that before. Hmm. I'll talk to him. All right, sir. I was under the impression that nothing had changed here since I left. So many years have passed. But it seems to me like it was just last month. The same scenery. The same weather. As though time would rather avoid this place. Sir, a lot has changed in your absence. Nothing is as it was, believe me. We are all growing old, and so is everything around us. I've been a servant here since my youth, and I know well how much a man can be changed by this place. During the last few months, things have been getting noticeably worse, day by day. It is as if the bleakness within the old walls of this manor is gradually taking us over. Hmm? Maybe you're right, but I don't feel exactly well within these walls. And recalling memories of me that I've wanted to forget. Range and dark in them, and that dismal silence. Bates, could you please light up the fireplace in my room? It's quite cold in there. Oh, pardon this old servant, sir. I had completely forgotten about it. I will be happy to light up your fireplace. Also, if you need the room cleaned up properly, please say so. It was abandoned for over 12 years, and one hasty cleanup is insufficient. No, the room is all right. Thank you. You're welcome, sir. I need the key to the attic. Do you know where I can find it? It is hanging in the kitchen right next to the cellar door. You cannot possibly miss it. I'm going to need the key later today. Can you please put it back afterwards, sir? Of course I'll return it. Thank you. Have a look at this picture. Do you know this man? Hmm. He does not look familiar to me. I am not very good at remembering faces, though. Sorry, sir. Are you sure you're all right, Bates? You know, you can take a rest whenever you want. Thank you, sir. I think I will be fine. I think I will go now. I'll return to my work. Fresh apples and a few sweets. 
almond sweets from Switzerland. I like these best. They don't seem to be working, showing half past seven. This is the key to the attic. I'll take it. There's some dirty water at the bottom. Maybe there were flowers in it once. Spice grinder. The dining table of the servants. Dirty coffee mug. There's a big bee on its side. It probably belongs to Bates. I don't need anything from here. picture frames and other old garbage. Useless. There is nothing in it, just a few sheets of paper. Old scrolls and lots of spider webs. It's locked. Quite well preserved. Strange. The entrance to the tower is nailed shut. I must get rid of these barrier boards somehow. I can't do this with my bare hands. I can't see anything special here. Bates? Yes, sir? You're not looking well. Why don't you take a couple of days off? Thank you, sir. I will be all right. It's just William. We lived our best years together here. Indeed. You must have become very good friends over time. Yes. Please, let us not talk about this further. There has been enough sorrow lately. Bates, 
I want you to know that you're more of a friend to us than a servant. Thank you, sir. Bates, would you happen to know where I can find a toolbox? Do you need to get something fixed, sir? I'll tell Morris. He will take care of it. No, nothing like that. I don't need his help. In that case, I think you should be able to find some tools in the stable. Thanks. Why is the entrance to the old tower blocked? Madam ordered me to nail the door shut so that she would not have to think about that place ever again. She does not want anyone to enter William's study. I see. I think I will go now. I'll return to my work. This is the place where William took his last breath. I won't leave before I find out the truth. My name is Samuel Gordon. You are Morris, the groom, aren't you? Yes, sir. I know who you are. Bates told me about you. I would like to ask you about something, Morris. What can you tell me about Bates? What do you want to know about him? Well, I don't know exactly. He's different from when I knew him. To me, he seems to be the same all the time. The same old standoffish mope. He wasn't like that before. That's possible. I've only known him for the couple of years that I've worked here. So how many years have you been working here? Almost five. Morris, how did you get along with William? Well, like a groom with the horse owner. Okay, I guess. He's only spoken a few sentences to me in all the time that I've been working here. I mean, I saw him very seldom. I see. Morris, you are right next to the old wing. Can you see inside the old tower from your room? What do you mean? I never go there. Who told you that? It was that old drunkard, right? I was just asking, why are you so upset? I knew that Flores bastard was spreading gossip about me again. He tells you anything, don't believe him, sir. Ends to get smashed and talk out of his ass. Sure, but you've been to the old wing, right? Yes, but only out of curiosity. I've got no reason to go there. And it's a strange place anyway. What do you mean? Well, I haven't exactly got a good feeling about it. I feel like I'm being watched by something older than the centuries within those old, damp walls. And the silence, it makes one feel as if one cannot speak. Frankly, I'm glad I don't have any work to do there. Morris, look here. Do you know this man? Hmm... I wouldn't say so. I've never seen him around here. Okay. Thank you. I will go then. All right, sir. There's enough light in here during the day. Nails, screws, nothing I need. Hmm, I should be able to get rid of the barrier boards on the door to the tower. Empty glasses and paint cans, nothing useful.
red wine from our cellar. How did the bottle get here? Hmm. I'll ask Morris where he got it. Our family... Morris, do you have a moment? Sure. Morris, I've noticed you have a bottle of wine on your workbench in the stable. Wine? I sometimes take a sip when it's cold outside, but never during work. It appears to be our vintage red. Where did you get it? Well... Sir William gave it to me, some time ago, just this one bottle. Really? Yes, sir. All right, Morris. I do not believe that William would have given away some of our best wine. Morris must have gotten it some other way. I will go then. All right, sir. is free of obstacles. Damn! The door is locked. I have no idea where the key could be. I should ask Victoria. in your room as you wished, sir. Thank you, Bates. It was quite cold in there. I will return to my duties now. If you need something, I will be downstairs in the hall. All right. Smoke from the leaves smells nice. Good morning. Good morning, sir. My name is Henry. I take care of the garden. It's not an easy job. I don't have anyone to help me. But you probably wanted to speak about something else, sir. What can I do for you, sir? I would just like to ask a few questions. How long have you been working here, Henry? About a year, sir. The garden seems rather deteriorated. Everything used to blossom around here, but now... I'm trying hard, sir, but I can't get everything done just by myself. 
This garden is really a lot of work, sir. Tell me, Henry, what did you think of William? I didn't really know him, sir. I'd scarcely seen him. You have worked here every day and you hardly saw him? Well, you see, Sir William wouldn't go to the garden very often, and I only do what Madame Victoria tells me. Bates was the only one allowed in his study. He wouldn't let anyone else in. Is there anything else you can tell me about him? I don't really feel like talking about him with you. Why not? Hmm... How would I put it? Everyone reckoned he was a bit of a loony. You know what I mean. Go on. I don't really want to talk about it with you, sir. Please ask someone else. What does that mean? Why would anybody perceive William as mad? Henry, do you recognize the man in this picture? Have you ever seen him? No, sir. I don't think I have. Who is it? Should I know him? No, probably not. I just wanted to know if you had ever met him. I'm sorry, sir. I will leave you to your work. The door is locked. It looks like blood. How is this possible? Henry? Yes? Henry, I went to the greenhouse and found it locked. Why? I lock it during the day as well, just to be safe. To be safe? I don't want anyone wandering about the place and snooping in my stuff. Do we have strangers walking around here then? No, sir. That's not the problem. But I've seen Morris around there a couple times, and he's got no business there. The greenhouse and the garden are both my responsibilities. I usually lock it so that I can be sure nothing gets lost. But if you want to have a look inside, sir, I'll open it. No, I only wanted to know why it was locked. What could Morris be looking for in the greenhouse? Hmm. Henry? There's blood in the grinder in front of the greenhouse. Where did it come from? But that's impossible, sir. I only put branches in it. Are you quite sure? Hmm. Perhaps you're right. I probably imagined it. I should probably take a rest. Who knows what I've seen? I will leave you to your work. Bates. Yes, sir? Bates, this might seem strange to you, but I would like to see the exact spot where William died. Oh, but why, sir? I have my reasons. Oh, well, follow me if you insist. This is where the awful thing happened. Please, just do not ask me to describe it to you. I have told the detective everything already, and I would not want... No, that's all right, Bates. Why all of this then, sir? I can feel something is not right. I just don't know what. Have you found anything unusual around here? No, uh, maybe just... We noticed a strange spot under the tower window, right there. No one knows where it came from. If you would allow me, sir, I'd rather go now. 
Certainly. I knew Bates wouldn't understand why I was doing this. Something tells me things aren't quite as they seem. It looks like a symbol of some sort, or a sign. I should put this down somehow. It looks like I should. I'll have a closer look. Something got stuck between the branches of the shrub. What could it be? I put the key back where I found it. Do you need anything, sir? I would like to ask you about something. Certainly, sir. I found this at that place you took me to. You mean where Sir William? Yes. I'm quite sure it can shed some light on what has happened. I am not as optimistic as you are, sir. Maybe you should hand the object over to Detective Collier. Bates, this thing may help us discover something new. I know one thing, sir. Sir William is dead, and no one can do anything to change that. You don't happen to believe that it was a suicide or an accident, do you? I have known William too long to believe that. Well, I have already offered my opinion on the matter. Can I go now, sir? You surprise me, Bates. I'm sorry, sir. Talk to Henry. He was working on the flower beds that evening. He might know more than I do. It seems to me that Bates knows something he doesn't want to talk about. But why would he do that? No, I'm not too sure. I think I will go now. I'll return to my work. It should still work. Hmm. There's no film in it, and my old films are useless. I need to speak with you, Robert. Sure. I need film for my camera. Do you know where I can get some? Well, perhaps down in Willow Creek. But hold on, I think I may have a couple of rows myself. They should probably still be usable. Can you give me one? I would be happy to. But I put them in the attic with some other old things. It is in my chest. That's the one right round the corner. You'll have no problem finding it. Thank you. I'll go pick it up. Sure. Take all the film you need. I have no use for it. I went to the attic to get that film, but your chest is locked. May I borrow your key? Locked? Oh, I have entirely forgotten about that. Sorry. Here's the key. Thank you. I'll bring it back. You needn't hurry. I use it so infrequently. 
I spoke with Bates. Why don't you allow him into your study? Did he tell you this? You see, I just don't want anyone to disturb me all the time. I have enough of my own problems and can do without his civility. What's the matter? Nothing special, I guess. I just happen to have a bit more work than usual these days. Robert, look at this old picture. Do you know who this might be? Hmm. No, I do not know that person. Why are you asking? I found the picture in the old wing, torn to pieces in a fireplace. Given the fact that someone has torn up the picture, the person in it is probably not anyone important. Forget about it. I must go now. Right then. I'll return to my work. Hopefully, it's going to work. I'm out of practice, but I guess the film is installed properly. All I need to do now is have the film developed. But where do I get it developed? Yes, sir. What can you tell me about this? Let me see. Hmm, a piece of hard stone with some symbols. Looks quite old. Other than that, I don't know. The gardener, what is he like? Henry? A quiet type of person, I'd say. As long as he's sober, that is. You know what I mean. I was unaware of his drinking. You can bet on it, sir. When he's in the mood, he closes himself in his room and drinks until he can't lift his head. Usually, he just sits there, staring at nothing and drinking. I'd say that is quite odd, isn't it? Odd indeed. He does not seem like a drunkard to me. Well, you can trust me, and you're bound to see for yourself anyway. Have you seen it inside the cask? No, you see... Can you think of anyone who may know something? Well, it looks old. Maybe that bloodsucker Murray might know something. He buys and sells such stuff, you know. Sometimes he has people coming to him from great distances to look through some of that junk he's got. God knows where he gets it all from. Thanks. I'll certainly go see him. No problem, sir. I will go then. All right, sir.
to be very fond of this place. He would often come here to make paintings and sometimes would spend whole days here. The black... Do you need anything, sir? That picture behind us, Henry, when did William paint it? A long time ago, sir, when he still went out to the garden. Madam ordered me to leave it here, so I've been taking care of it. Sir William sure was talented. Don't you think, sir? Yes, he was. Have a look at this. I found it under the old tower. Why are you showing it to me, sir? Well, I showed it to Bates, and he suggested I speak with you. Do you know anything about it? Me? I don't see why I should. I've never seen anything like it before. He also said you had been trimming the shrubs in the area that afternoon. Yes, that's true. But I have nothing to do with this thing. Calm down. Just tell me what you know about it, that's all. All right, then. But you have to promise you won't tell Madam. I can't afford to lose my job. Of course. Go ahead. Well, I don't really know what it is, but I found a similar piece near that place. Do you have it with you? No. Not really. You see, I... I had to pawn it. I was broke. Pawn? It doesn't seem to be of any special value. Well, maybe not the one you're holding in your hand. But there was a beautiful gem. A ruby, I'd say, in the one I found. Where did you pawn it? At Old Murray's. Where else? <sighs> it's good that you told me while there's still time. Give me your bill of exchange, and I will redeem the object. But I haven't got it. I don't know where I've put it. Henry, it's very important. Try to remember. I have no idea where it could be. But you won't forget about your promise, will you? It's going to stay just between us. Right, sir? We shall see. Henry, let's return to that bill of exchange. I knew you'd ask. But believe me, sir, I really haven't got it. You needed the money, so you conveniently lost the bill of exchange? Well, yes, I needed the money, not the bill. I really didn't intend to redeem that thing. Somebody might be interested in where I found the thing, and I could lose my job. You're going to lose it for sure if you don't give me that bill. But I haven't got it. You really promised this would stay between us. Henry, you need to realize that this is very important. You had better get that bill for me. I'd give it to you right away, if I could, sir. Uh, all right. I don't believe a word of what he's saying. I will leave you to your work. Doctor, can I have a word with you? Yes, all right. It's William. I know you were his friend and also his physician. Yes, that applies to your whole family. So, what is it that troubles you, Gordon? You do realize that this is not the appropriate time to speak about William. 
I don't believe it was an accident. Hmm. Well, it is strange indeed. Then why would he do it? And those burns? What burns? Numerous deeply burned areas. I have no clue as to their origin. Go on. No, Mr. Gordon. Come back tomorrow. I will gladly tell you everything. I really do not want to talk about this today. All right. Then expect me tomorrow. I will certainly come back. Dr. Herman knows something important. I have to talk to him tomorrow. Have you ever seen this man? No, I have not. He looks like someone I would remember if I had seen him. The map of our manor. It might come in handy. I'll take it. The statue is holding something strange in its hand. It appears to be a key of some sort, or an amulet. William's work table. The Chronicle of the Warm Hill Manor. The local parish has been here for a very, very long time. According to the oldest books and records, it has been here for so long that only the walls of our castle may remember its foundation. Marcus Gordon had the church built so long ago that the date has already been lost in the mists of time. Therefore, the actual age of the building can only be estimated. As in the past, there was no accurate record keeping. Should we hold to the views of respected historians, it was around 1215 AD that the church was built. It is thought that Marcus had the church built on pagan lands where many innocent people died through the ages. There is no corresponding record to this, however. Not one mention in any books or volumes available to me at the manor or the vicarage. Therefore, from a historic standpoint, this is a mere assumption, or worse, one of the many fictitious legends circulating in these lands. One thing, however, is more certain. It was this age that also gave rise to the academy at Black Mirror. As with Warm Hill Church, it was Marcus who was responsible for the construction of such a significant building. The new academy with its vast library was supposed to serve as a knowledge base for all the people. It was also a safe place for depositing the chronicle of the Gordon family that Marcus ordered his wise men to protect. In this, however, fate was not kind to Marcus. The whole academy burnt to stone long after his death, around 1512 AD. Despite the vigorous effort of the people at the manor, who hurried to the disaster to fight the flames, the academy burned to the ground. When they saw there was no chance to save the building, they tried to save the records from inside. Not everyone was willing to risk their life in lethal heat for the scraps of paper that had been scribbled over. If it hadn't been for a few brave souls, however, we would have never known who Marcus Gordon was, nor some of the history of Black Mirror Manor, as most chronicles were lost to the flames. Garmoor Gordon perished in the fire at the age of 45. For his bravery, eternal memory is held. There was no one left of the Academy to care for the remaining records and old books. Consequently, the volumes that remained were passed on to the Warm Hill Parish to the safekeeping of Father Matthias. Father Matthias took meticulous care of the historical treasure until his death in 1543. To that holy man, the people of Garmoor Gordon are grateful for the preservation of the chronicle and the old records. 
Since those times, the Gordon family chronicle has been handed over from one successor of Father Matthias to the next, until today. Recorded by hand of Jeremy Gordon, 1632 AD. I know I should leave Victoria alone, but I must ask her about the key to William's study in the tower. One of my distant ancestors, Durgham Gordon. This canvas is at least 300 years old. Strange that time has not faded it. I have nothing to look for in these drawers. It most likely contains Victoria's personal things. Durgham Gordon. An old issue of a magazine on nature, Nature Will. In the past, we used to have our own stable of full-blooded stallions. Some of them won many races. All that fame is long lost now. Victoria, I know you want to be alone, but I must ask you about something that only you can answer. Maybe it will help to get some fresh thoughts. Memories can become so tiring. During the last few years, I have had plenty of time with my thoughts. What is it that you want to talk about, Samuel? I hoped I would not have to return to this place ever again. And even now, I'm not sure if I should have. I did not dare hope you would come. The letters to you were all returned, and no one from the family had seen you in years. As time passed, we assumed you were dead. I didn't open a single one of them. I wanted to forget it all. Only that morning letter. I had to open that one. Maybe I should have left it unread, like the other ones. Your words are cold, Samuel. If it hadn't been for William's death, I would have never returned. I return because of William only. I don't expect you to understand it. Bates isn't looking well. He's old and very tired. He should take a rest. I would suggest that to him myself, but I know he does not want to be alone right now. He and William were friends long before I knew him. He has worked here all his life, just like his father before him. He feels comfortable to be with us, I am sure. That person who was with us at the funeral, who is he? Dr. Herman, our family physician. But it would be more accurate to say, our family friend. I had never heard of him. Well, how could you? He moved here long after you had gone away. He's a good man. He was a friend to William and has helped us a good deal. Until William began avoiding people, they were often together. Why are you interested in Heinz? I don't know him, so I wanted to know who he is. That new gardener, Henry, I've heard he drinks. He is not new here. He has been working for us for over a year now. What you have heard is true, but it does not happen very often. Except for that particular habit, he is polite and hard-working. I'm surprised you're saying this. Does his drinking not bother you? Well, I do, but I would have trouble finding anyone else for the job. 
Replacing him with a new gardener couldn't possibly be a problem, could it? Maybe not a few years ago, but now... You haven't been here in a long time. A lot has changed, Samuel. No one wants to work for us, not after what happened. People are superstitious. They see dark forces in everything. I'm glad that he has stayed, even if my garden looks so miserable. But why are you asking about Henry? Is it that you know something about him that I should know too? No, not really. Morris said Henry acts strangely from time to time. Morris? That hardly surprises me. He is strange himself. If I had someone to take over his job, he wouldn't be here now. That reminds me. I ordered him to board up the old well, so there is no possibility of an accident there. Samuel, would you please see to it that he does it today? Of course. Look at this stone fragment. Does it mean anything to you? No, I wouldn't say so. But yes, I have seen something similar on William's desk. He was very careful with that thing. Only I don't know what the big deal was. He never spoke about it. Can you have a look at this picture? Do you know who this man is? Hmm. I've seen that face before. Yes. But not exactly this one. What do you mean? He was much younger than this picture, but it was the same person. So, who is it? William once brought an orphan here and offered him food and shelter for a couple of days. He lived for a time outside by the stable, a humble, quiet boy. Do you know what his name was? It was a very long time ago. I cannot remember. He stayed with us for quite some time, but then he completely changed. It was as if he had gone mad. We could not let him stay here after that. They took him to Ashbury. What happened to him then? I really do not know. As I said, it was a very long time ago. Robert might remember. It was he who accepted that boy as a patient. I spoke with Robert about the old wing. He said its walls were the only remnants of the original castle. That is true. It is all that survived the burn. I do not recall anyone that had conquered the castle in the past. No one conquered it, at least not in the true sense of the word. The castle was half destroyed in a conflict between the first Gordons. Marcus knew he could not rise against his brother's people directly. Therefore, he decided to take him by surprise in the secret chapel deep under the castle. Mordred realized this too late and the consequences were terrible. But those are merely old legends. Just old stories. Do you need anything, Victoria? No, thank you, Samuel. I am all right. Maybe just... No, you needn't worry. I'll ask Bates. Victoria, why was William hiding away in his study? No one saw him go outside, and he would not let anyone in. Why all the secrecy? I don't know, Samuel. About half a year ago, he closed himself in that damn tower and spent whole days and nights there. He never told me what he was doing. When I asked, he merely stated that he was looking for the truth and that he would not stop until he found it. It entirely absorbed him, and you know how it ended. I hope that he has found his truth. That secret chapel you have spoken of, it must be somewhere beneath us. Nobody has ever found a trace of the entrance, let alone the whole chapel, Samuel. It's merely an old legend from the Chronicle. What happened to Marcus after Mordred died? He became the lord of the manor and died a long time later, a tired old man. As a tribute to his leadership, they buried him in a secret crypt. Today no one knows where his body rests. Do any further records of his life still exist? None that I know of. 
Victoria, I need the key to William's study. I know that you insist that no one go in there, but... No one is allowed to set foot in there. Why are you talking about that place to me, Samuel? Why are you making me think of it? I just wanted... Go away. I need to be alone now. Of course. This door leads to the lower floor. The entrance has been walled up for years. Bates, I would like a word with you. I'm listening, sir. Bates. I said something inappropriate to Victoria. Do you think she will accept my apology? Certainly, sir. Madam has a good heart. But if I may advise you, sir, offer your apology as soon as possible. I think I will go now. I'll return to my work. should apologize. May I speak with you for a while, Victoria? Of course, Samuel. I'd like to apologize for what I said before. I may have been hasty in my response as well. I had that key destroyed so that no one can ever enter the tower again. Maybe William had another key, I do not know. Where are his personal belongings now? I do not know. I... Ask Herman. I do not want to talk about it. It seems like something's missing here. Doctor, can I have a word with you? Yes, all right. Dr. Herman... Victoria told me you had William's personal belongings. Yes, that is true. I would like to see them. Sure. I can show them to you when you come to the morgue tomorrow. I just do not have any idea what you are expecting. Well, I must see them today. Can you help me? Today? Well, all right. Maybe we could do it like this. I will send someone to the main gate with a parcel for you. Will that do? Perfectly. What time will this person come? I will send him as soon as I get back to the autopsy room. Let us say, seven o'clock? I'll be waiting in front of the main gate at exactly seven o'clock. It's very important. I hope the person is reliable. Do not fear. He will be well paid. Settled? Thank you, Doctor. At seven, I have to be in front of the gate. May I disturb you for a few moments? I would like to ask a couple of questions. All right. I'm listening. Robert, 
Do you know where I can get that film you gave me developed? Hmm. I only know of Murray in Willow Creek. I go to him myself when I need some pictures developed. He has a dark room in his pawn shop. Do you know where it is? Yes, I remember that shop. Try him. I guess I should go there. Here's your key back, Robert. Oh, thanks. Have you found what you needed? Yes, I have. Morris and Henry don't seem to like each other. They've got some battles going on, but unless they bump into each other too often, they cause no harm. But I don't really care about their silly problems. Why doesn't Victoria like Morris? You mean why she can't stand him? Well, maybe because he is so common. Aristocratic prejudice, you know what I mean. I'm not into this nonsense about blue blood myself. Victoria, however, has her own opinions. Morris says that Henry drinks quite a bit. I don't like that very much, to tell you the truth. Neither do I. But there was no one else to take the job. So we have basically put up with that habit of his. He has not done anything wrong yet, anyway. Not yet, right? I showed the picture we talked about yesterday to Victoria. She said she knew the man, that he had lived for some time near the castle. Are you sure you don't know who he is? Let me see the picture again. I'm not quite certain, but he resembles one of my patients in the institution. It could possibly even be him. I do not see where this picture could have come from, though. Maybe we can find out. Who could have brought a picture of some madman to the castle? And why? I will go now. All right. Feel free to come back if you need anything. Samuel. I'm glad to see this place again. William often took me here when I was just a little boy. Oh well, it's such a long time, but my memories are as clear as yesterday morning. How many years have I actually been away? Hundreds of years old. It's locked. Hi, what's your name? I won't tell you that. I must not talk to strangers. My mum has forbidden me. So, will you tell me your name if I tell you mine? No, I don't know you. Have you got some sweets? Maybe some chocolate? Would you like some sweets? Sure, that would be great. Are they chocolate? I don't really know. My name is Samuel Gordon. Will you tell me your name too? Well, why not then? I'm Vic. Do you know of anything interesting going on around here? I haven't been in this place in a very long time. Hmm, probably not. Nothing much happens here. This village is terribly boring, you know. I see. Can I go play again? Of course. Watch out for the windows. Yeah, don't worry. Vic, have you ever seen the man in this picture? Let me see. No, I guess I haven't. I would have surely remembered that one. He looks pretty stupid. Why are you looking for him, Samuel? Are you related? You had better watch your mouth. Come on, that was just a joke. Clean towels from the kitchen, no doubt. 
How many times have I seen this sign? I I'm not sure. The day's menu. Road deer on cream. Wild boar shoulder. Gamekeeper style. Harry's wife always did cook well. Good morning. Hello, hello, sir. I haven't been here in a long time. What can you tell me about the manor? Well, I'm not sure where to begin, but really, there isn't much in the way of news. Hold on. You seem familiar to me. Haven't we met at the winter feasts? No, I don't think so. But I do know you. See, I'm pretty good with faces. What about last month during the vintage? Is that it? Listen, I... Yeah, yeah, I know. You probably owe me something and aren't comfortable with my having recognized you, right? I owe you nothing, Harry. Did you say Harry? Tom, this young lad here is calling me Harry, but he says he doesn't know me. Don't let him annoy you, sir. He's been trying that on strangers for as long as I remember. I just... Is that a problem with the fact that I want me money back? There wouldn't be any if you weren't making those debts up. Bah! Indeed. You're the right one to say that. Should I show you your last month's bill? Right, right. Calm down. I was just advocating this young fellow here. Because he's a stranger and he doesn't know those tricks of yours. Okay, I've had enough. One more word and you're not getting a pint of water on credit. Or, let me tell you what. I'll pour you nothing until you pay off the whole debt. Come on, Harry. Don't be a cheatskate. Listen, if you let me finish, I'll tell you who I am. Sounds great. I'm listening. I am Samuel Gordon, the son of Randall Gordon of Castle Black Mirror. Why didn't you say so right away? Well, I tried to, but you wouldn't actually let me speak. Okay, well, that gives things a nice twist. A Gordon is always welcome here. So, what can I get you? Today, we have smoked venison on the menu, along with a good stuff beer. No, uh, thanks. Maybe later. I'd like to ask a couple of questions, though. Oh, sure. Harry, what's new in the village? Things happen, but there isn't much news. How should I understand that? Well, I hear a lot of gossip, but nothing worth mentioning. You see, we all know one another here, so nothing's too interesting. Maybe. That's going to change now. Yeah, I'll let you know when it does. Harry, until what time are you open? Well, that depends but usually late into the night. You see, I don't sleep much, and when I'm not doing something, I'm usually pretty bored. But not many folks show up so late, do they? I usually play cards with Tom here, or I play chess with myself. Oh, you play chess? I'd say I've learned to play well during all those long nights. Let's play together sometime then. Sure. I remember yep. he was a serious poker player, you know. Incredibly lucky with the cards. He would totally clear us out, but then he would return everything. Uh, yeah, he was a nice bloke. That's a real shame he stopped coming here. Hmm. Why? Who knows? We were all on good terms. But the last six months, he didn't show up once. Well, it's a bit of a distance. And at his age? Nah, I wouldn't say that was the reason. William was always a tough old gent. I'll tell you something, though. They say he wouldn't even come out of the castle, and instead locked himself away in the old tower to study some old volumes and stuff. Where did you hear that? Well, I told you. I hear things from time to time. What else have you heard? Nothing. But maybe Mark knows something. 
He used to help out in the manor garden. Where can I find him? He would normally be here by now, so he's probably not going to turn up today. Never mind. I'll ask him some other time. As if William was hiding something. I have to know more about the last months of his life. Hello. Hello. How long have you been sitting here? A few hours, I guess. Why do you want to know? That's my way of saying hello, I guess. Oh, okay. I've been here for two or three hours. I've got nothing to do today. Why don't you take a chair? No, thank you. Maybe some other time. Tell me, is anything interesting going on in the village? Here? No. In fact, I don't remember anything interesting ever happening around here. In Willow Creek, nothing ever changes. I saw a fisherman on the shore on my way here. Do you know him? Oh, Jim? Of course I know him. He's my uncle from my mother's side. Is he always sitting there, fishing? He appears to have been sitting there the whole day. Yeah, he's the most patient person I've ever known. He spends hours on that pier just sitting. I wouldn't last a single hour, you know. How long have you owed Harry money? That's my business, not yours. Or do you want to pay up for me? Should I? Well, I overheard your conversation about old Sir William. Do you know anything that might be interesting to me? Maybe I do, maybe I don't. My memory is fogging up. It's probably the thirst, you know. Oh, I see. I know where he's coming from. I'll pay off his debt, and then I'll ask again. Change your mind about the dinner? My Mary makes some wonderful meals. Everyone around here will tell you that. I believe you. I'm just not hungry yet. I would like to ask a couple of questions, though. Okay, feel free. Will you change your mind about that debt of Tom's? It's partly my fault, you know. I'd be glad to, but then he wouldn't pay it off next month either. They say he who doesn't pay should not drink. Well, there is some truth to that. I have decided to pay off Tom's debt. But why would you want to do that, Mr. Gordon? I just want to. Could you sum it up? Hmm. Okay, well, as you wish. At 17 pounds. All right. Here. Well, I've no idea what Tom might have promised you, but you better not believe him. That's none of your business. So what is his bill like now? All clear. Good. What do you want from me? I'd just like to ask about something. All right. I have done what you have asked. Now it's your turn. Right, I heard you. I guess you have done me a good turn. So what do you know about William? I'll tell you what I've heard. Nothing more, nothing less. I'm listening. People have said that from time to time, Sir William would go to the vicarage at night. That's all? What's so strange about him going to church? Nothing much, I'd guess, if it hadn't been late after midnight. Oh, that is strange indeed. Just ask the gravedigger or the vicar. They both saw him. But don't mention me if you decide to go see him. They needn't know that I told you anything. Oh, thank you. I need to speak with Mark. You probably know each other. Yeah, we've known each other for years, but he's not here today. Do you know where he works? I Mark 
only works when he must. He hasn't got a permanent job. But try old Murray. Or Herman. He does something for both of them from time to time. So, how's it going? All right, I guess. Why don't you take a chair? I'm a little... Never mind. The door is locked. There is a sign that reads, I'll be right back, Murray. But who knows if it hasn't been hanging here for a week already. Vic, have you seen Murray today? His shop is closed. Why should I care about his shop? Why? Is there a problem? Well, that old man doesn't like me hanging around that shop of his. Or rather around those glass cases. I've got no idea what his problem is. Hmm. I may have one. Oh. I do remember seeing him leave this morning. Do you have an idea when he will be returning? Judging by how he sharped himself up, he must have gone into town. So he's probably not going to return before tomorrow. Oops! What was that? What's this here? A ball? Vic! I know it was you, and I know you can hear me. Just you wait till I catch you. I'll beat you within an inch of your life. Ah, oh, damn. Now I'll have to clean up all this mess. Hmm. I suspect Vic is not going to show up for a while. Hello, sir. Will you see? No. Never mind. Later then. See you. <laughs> the Warm Hill Parish. <laughs> the main entrance is closed and only opens on Sundays. I've got to use the side entrance. is locked. Good afternoon. Have you time for a little talk? I never hurry anywhere, unlike everyone else around here. I'm interested in learning about the parish and this cemetery. I think you're the right man to ask. Maybe. I've been helping Father Frederick for many years now. I know the names on all the graves. What do you want to know? Tell me, how old is this parish? No one knows how old exactly, but this cemetery and church are much older than anything in the neighborhood. A long time ago, they used to bury heretics here. They say there's a system of corridors under the cemetery where the souls of the innocent wander looking for a way out. You know, I've seen quite a lot all these years here, but... For instance? Well, it was a long time ago, but some years back I heard something like the voice of a child in the distance. It was moaning and singing verses. At first, I thought it was just an illusion, but then 
I could no longer contain my curiosity and went outside to have a look. I followed the sound of the voice, but the closer I got, the less audible the voice became. Maybe it was just a child playing nearby. Two hours after midnight? I don't think so. Plus, look around. There are graves far and wide. Hmm. But that's past now. I have no idea what it was, and I do not want to know. I don't even know why I'm telling you this. Have you heard the voice again, or anything similar? I've already told you enough. Don't tell anyone about this. I don't want to look like an old fool. May I have a look inside the church? You have to wait for Father Frederick to return. The church is going to stay locked until then. But you can open it, can't you? It doesn't matter. It's going to stay locked, as Father Frederick ordered. Tell me, what is your name, actually? Mine? No one calls me anything other than Gravedigger. Father Frederick's Gravedigger. And I don't mind if you have questions about it. It's true, anyway. And you are a Gordon, right? Yes. Samuel Gordon. Oh, you're the grandson of old Mr. William? Yes. I saw you at the funeral. Of course. Did you know William? No, not personally. I would see him from time to time, though. He used to go inside the church. How often? Not that often, but when he did show up, he was always in a hurry. As if he knew he didn't have much time left. Did he ever speak with you? No, I told you, I did not know him well. But he would speak with Father Frederick, wouldn't he? You will have to ask Father that yourself. I will. Thanks. You said you have known Father Frederick for many years. What can you tell me about him? Father Frederick is the best man I know. He took me in when I was orphaned and raised me as his son. For that I will be grateful to him for the rest of my life, and I will be around to help him as long as I am able to. But if you want to talk to him, you will have to wait until he returns from the neighboring manor. I see. Thanks. I've heard that you sometimes saw William come to the vicarage late at night. Is that true? Who told you that? That's not important. So is it true? I don't care to talk about it. I don't want to look for problems. Whatever you tell me will stay just between us. It's not like I think I can trust you, but since you're a Gordon, I'll tell you what I've seen. Everyone who knew old Sir William thought he was a bit of a madman. Please don't get offended. And later, when he refused to see anyone, the gossip began floating about. I'm telling you this so that you know I'm not making up what I'm going to tell you next. Go on. I first saw him here some six months ago. I was sitting in my cabin, about to go to bed. I saw a light. It was someone approaching the church. In the twenty years that I've been working here, no one has ever come here this late. So I went outside to check out what was going on. I saw a figure concealed in a dark coat walking among the graves. He was looking for something, his head down to the ground. Was it William? At that moment I had no idea who it was. I couldn't see his face in the darkness. He spent some twenty minutes there going round, mumbling something. What was he saying? Well, I observed him from a distance. It wasn't audible. So what happened next? The church door opened, and he made for it right away. I cautiously followed him. Father Frederick was standing in the doorway. It seemed as if he was expecting that person. It was only then I realized it was Sir William, because I was close enough to recognize his voice. 
He and the father had a long conversation then, and Sir William was waving his hands vigorously about during most of it. They finally went inside, and that is all I saw. Do you know anything more? I never stick my nose in other people's business. Thanks for telling me this. I only told you because you're Sir William's grandson. Now leave me alone. I have to finish my work here. I was really meeting the Father Frederick in the middle of the night. William will rest in this cold grave forever. I'll find out the whole truth, even if I go through hell for it. May I disturb you? Not for long. I've got a lot of work to do. Has Father Frederick returned yet? No, he hasn't. It's a long journey from Winshire. He won't be back until tomorrow. Tomorrow? I'd like. You'd like to go inside the church, but I already told you about that. Now go. I have to finish this before dusk. It's seven o'clock. I should return to the main gate. If Herman is true to his word, his man will be waiting there for me. You must be Dr. Herman's man, is that right? I'm not Herman's man. I just work for him from time to time. You're Samuel Gordon, aren't you? I've got something to deliver. Yes, please give it to me. Yeah, why not? I don't care who you are anyway. I was supposed to give this package to whoever came to this gate at seven. That's when my job is over. Take it so I can go. Hold on a minute. Are you Mark? Yeah, that's me. Why? Harry said you had worked in our garden. A couple of times. So what? I'd like to ask you about William Gordon. What can you tell me about him? Hmm. Nothing. I barely knew him. I just worked in the garden. I'm in a hurry. Do you want anything else? No, thanks. Good. See you around. Bye. I hope I'll find what I'm looking for. There's only a watch and a few trinkets in it. I'll open it. William made a remark of some kind here. To my forgetful head, the path to the key begins in the library, on my work table, hidden away under the blue curtain of unwritten words.
There's a button under the inkwell. I'll try to press it. There's a box of some sort. I'll take it. it. That must be William's key. left William's key on the other side of the door. The lock must have gotten stuck. The lid is locked. The black rook is missing. Did one move? Several scrolls scribbled over with notes. There isn't anything useful on them. Lots of scrolls and papers, but none with William's writing. He must have been recording the important notes somewhere. As though I've heard that melody somewhere before.
Hmm, this title makes no sense. I'll have a closer look. There's a small key inside the book. The pages have been cropped so as to hide it. I'll take it. book has been glued to the bottom side of the drawer. The diary of William Gordon. William's diary. Excellent. Hopefully I'll finally learn what happened that night. March 21st. I'm old. I'm old. I know my time is drawing in. And that is why I want to put some sense into my life before I leave this world. I have contributed my last years to looking for the truth about my family and the blood that runs in my veins. Maybe it is also because of the guilt that I bear in my heart for the fate of my dear James. The fate that I didn't have the courage to change. After all the years spent with the old journals, I know at last what the goal of my search is. I must not lose time. March 23rd. In the chronicle of the manor and the old records in the library, I have learned things that were forgotten and much that is new. I learned that James is not the only one to have lost full control of his mind. Throughout the centuries, several of my blood ancestors have suffered from the same affliction that now curses James. It seems as though it is all somehow correlated has a perverse purpose of some kind. I traced the family line and learned that every one of those poor souls had been born in the same week, repeating with a period of two centuries. Is the madness supposed to be punishment of some sort? A punishment for deeds so horrible that we have not been pardoned, even after 700 years? I am terrified by this idea. It follows me now, day and night. April 5th. I feel something is not right with me. I am weaker from day to day. My age has caught up with me at last. As the Chronicle foretells, the way to revealing the truth is through five symbolic keys. I don't exactly know what their purpose is, but if they can lead me to the truth, I must obtain them. I have decided to pursue first the ones that have been carried over time far from my manor. Centuries ago, the keys were given to different men of our family for safekeeping, so that they couldn't be used together. Luckily, I still have my own with me, and obtaining James's keys should not be difficult. If only I had known before what I know today, I would not have given it to him. The next one must be in the hands of Marcus himself, according to the records. The fourth one was given to Durgham Gordon, the original owner of the remote manor in Wales. I must set off for Wales soon. That is certain. I still do not know where the fifth key is. Its origin eludes me in the many years of the past. When I obtain the other ones, I must find this last one too. April 15th. I have returned from Wales. My searching was futile. It was not easy to get into the family tomb. Unfortunately, I failed to reveal the next fragment of truth and returned home empty-handed. Not all hope is lost, however. I will focus on the keys that James and Marcus possess. It should not be hard to obtain them. April 21st. I cannot change what has happened in the past of my ancestors, but I hope I can influence the events of the future. The curse that has plagued our family must be of dateless origin. It must stretch into times as distant as those of Marcus and Mordred, the first Gordons. I have decided to start looking for answers at the place where the body of Marcus rests. I know that the tomb is concealed in the dark underground of the parish. Its entrance has long been lost in forgetfulness. No one knows where to begin to look for it. I will set off for the vicarage tonight, April 26th. Whatever it is that is buried underneath Warm Hill, 
it is not easily within reach. It took me several days before I discovered an extraordinary pedestal with numerous tiny and meticulously shaped stones in the belfry. The whole pedestal is a complex mechanical lock. Surely it will open the way to the church's underground for me. I tried to change the positions of the opposite stones, but it was beyond my will to fully concentrate. I was too tired to attempt to set up the mechanism properly. Before I left for home, I made a drawing of the whole mechanism and returned the stones to their original configuration. Tomorrow I will go to Warm Hill as early as possible. April 27th. Luck was on my side today. I opened the way leading to the tomb of Marcus. Surely, I'm the first one in centuries to have succeeded in doing so. How great was my surprise when I descended into the tomb. There was not a trace of Marcus's grave. Nothing. His body must be hidden somewhere. I hope that the answer lies in the four books surrounding the center of the tomb. Shall wisdom be your way? Writes an old text carved in stone. Even after his death, wisdom protects Marcus as it has in his life. I am almost positive that the first answer is map. Despite the darkness, I tried to write down the text from the books, but it was easier to memorize it. I also found it extraordinary, in all probability, a ceremonial object in the shape of a perfect sphere. When I touched it, it was as though whole long centuries breathed on me. An odd feeling. May 7th. I am afraid of this night. I have not slept for two days now, and I hear voices. Yes, human voices. There are dozens of them. Their whispering is melting my ears into a sea of horrifying noise. What's happening with me? Am I mad too? No, I repudiate that. Now that I am so close to the truth. It doesn't fit. a globe, and a sextant. What did William need all this for? Hmm, it's cold to the touch. I'll try to push the latch open. Success! As though I've heard... I... I'm feeling so strange. My head... Sir, you're awake at last. We were starting to worry that something might have happened to you. What happened to you, Samuel? I don't know. All of a sudden, my head started to ache vigorously. I cannot remember anything after that. How did I make it to my room? Bates found you lying unconscious in the attic. Yes. I was going to tidy up there when I saw you lying on the floor. I hurried to get Sir Robert, and then we carried you to your bed so that you could have a rest. I told you, Samuel, that you should take a rest after such a long journey. Perhaps you are right. I have no idea what happened. I vaguely remember having a strange dream, but I cannot figure out what it means. Important thing is that you're all right. Yes, that's true. It would be best for you to sleep for a while. This time, I will follow your advice, Robert. Good. We shall leave you alone then. If it gets worse, come see me. Thank you. Hopefully I will be all right now. Come, Bates. We shall leave Samuel to his rest. Yes, sir. Robert is right. 
I should take a rest. Tomorrow I'll find out more than today. had a terrible dream. In the morning, my thoughts were interrupted by a knock at the door. Sir! Sir! Open up! What's going on, Bates? Open up, sir! I have to tell you something! Hold on, Bates. I'm there in a moment. What's the matter, then? It's horrible, sir. Henry, our gardener. They found him in the garden pond. Calm down, Bates. What are you talking about? They found him dead this morning in the pond. I know what I am saying. I saw his body being dragged out. How did it happen? I have no idea. Detective Collier will tell you that. He has been questioning everyone for quite some time now. And he wants to speak to you, too. He did not give any of us a chance to recover from the shock. Not even Madam. Where will I find him? He's waiting for you in the common room. We had better go there right away, sir. All right. Let's go. Detective Collier. Yes. Samuel Gordon, I presume. I need to speak with you. Mr. Gordon, do you know what happened? Yes. Bates told me everything. Good. I need to ask you a couple of questions. Shall we begin? Yes. Did you speak with Henry Stanton yesterday? Yes. I only arrived yesterday, but I spoke with him during the day. Oh, you arrived yesterday? Yes, to attend William's funeral. I understand. What did you speak with Stanton about? I don't know exactly. It was a very trivial conversation. Had you known him from before? No, I, I only knew Mr. Dickens, who was Henry's predecessor. That was before you left the manor? Yes, about twelve years ago. Okay, let's return to your conversation with Stanton yesterday. Did he seem strange to you? Nervous or disturbed? No, nothing like that. He behaved normally. So, you are saying that he seemed normal? Right. I spoke to Morris, your groom, before this interview. He told me that Stanton would often have a bit too much to drink. Yes, I have heard the same. Madame Victoria has also confirmed it. What do you make of it? Well, they found him in the garden pond, tangled up in algae. I don't know yet how he ended up in there, but the most likely explanation is that it was on account of his drunken state. He might have bumped into something, lost his balance, and fallen into the water. Maybe. But don't you think the water would have awakened him? No, exactly the opposite. It was water that caused his death. He fainted, fell into the pond, and the cold water did its thing. Stopped his heart? He wouldn't be the first drunkard to have drowned like this. What's ironic, however, is that it didn't happen in a lake or a river, but in a little bit of water in the back garden. Oh well, no man can choose his death. If there is nothing you need to ask, I won't be keeping you any longer. Thank you. I have all I need for now. Would you please see me out? Certainly. Follow me, Detective. I will now wait for Dr. Herman's report and close this case. Thanks for your time, Gordon. You're welcome, Detective. 
Goodbye. Olio wants to close the case. Hmm. Now that Henry is dead, I've got to find a way to obtain the second part of that strange object. Morris, do you have a moment? Sure. Morris, have you boarded up the old well like I asked you to yesterday? Well, not yet, sir. I'll do it today. It should have been done yesterday. I'm surprised that Henry didn't fall into it. Excuse me, sir? You know well how I meant that. I want to see it secured today, or you can start looking for a new job. Is that clear? Sure, I'll do it. You needn't shout at me, sir. I have no idea what has gotten into me. Why did I yell at him like that? What do you think about what has happened to Henry? It was to be expected. He drank way too much. I guess it had to end like this. It sounds like you really don't care that it happened. Well, we didn't exactly like each other, but I wish no ill will to anyone. It was you who found him, right? Yes, I needed something from the back garden, and as I was walking past, I noticed something floating in the fountain. I went closer to have a look, and he was totally tangled up in the weeds. I could see nothing except his coat. Did you notice anything else? No, I panicked, you see. I ran to the castle to get Bates to go have a look with me. I kept thinking I might have been confused and imagined it. But it really was Henry. What happened next? I rode into the village to get the detective. You know the rest. So, Morris found Henry. Were you in the stable yesterday? Sure I was. Where else would I have been? The lights were not on. Well, maybe I wasn't. Why are you asking? Oh, I can see where you're coming from. You're thinking that maybe what happened to Henry might not have been an accident and that somebody might have helped him into that park. I may be a drunkard and a sauce box, sir, but I'm no murderer. No one is calling you a murderer, Morris. I was just asking. All right, fair enough, sir. If Madam learns that you are starting to suspect me, I may as well go looking for a new job. There's not much work available in this neighborhood. And besides, who would want to hire a man with one leg that is almost completely lame? I'm not accusing you of anything, Morris. At least not yet. I will go then. All right, sir. What happened to Henry is awful. First William, and now... Henry liked to drink, but other than that, he was a good man. I'm sorry, Victoria. I would like to be alone now. Do you need anything, Samuel? Dr. Herman, the physician, does he live in Willow Creek? No, some time ago he moved into an abandoned house near the old mill. It is quite close on the road to Willow Creek, the only house far and wide. Yes, I remember where that is. Thanks. Please excuse me now, Samuel.
veins. Yes, sir? Have you seen Robert today? Yes. Sir Robert was reading the newspaper in the dining room this morning. If you would like to speak with him, I am sure you'll find him in his study. I spoke to Collier. As you can imagine, he asked me a lot of curious questions. Tell me, what did he question you about? Many things. But most of all, he was interested in the place where we found Henry. It was very unpleasant having to describe it all over again, sir. Oh? Can you repeat to me what you told him? I was afraid you would ask. Well, if I must. I was awakened by a sharp knock at the door of my room. Morris was shouting something about Henry. He seemed utterly confused, rapidly pouring out incoherent sentences. He wanted me to go with him to the back garden immediately. At that moment, I still had no inkling of what had transpired. Did you go with him right to the fountain? Yes, and only there did I realize what had happened. It took me a while to come to myself again, but then I went straight to the telephone. What time was it? It was about six in the morning. Collier and Dr. Herman arrived an hour later. That is all, sir. You know the rest. Yes. Thanks for being so patient, Bates. What was Morris doing in the back garden so early in the morning? His work is in the stable, right? Yes, but he sometimes helps with the gardening. Henry cannot do everything that needs to be done. I mean, he was not... Bates, why don't you take the rest of the day off? You don't have to work under the circumstances. No, sir. I do not want to just be sitting around brooding. I'd rather attend to my responsibilities. It helps take my mind off things. I understand. When did Dr. Herman leave? Half an hour ago. He took Henry's body to the old morgue. Did he mention to anyone what he thought about all this? He had a long conversation with the detective, but I have no idea what they were speaking about. I was so distraught, I was not really listening. All right. That's all then, Bates. Body is in the old morgue then. You said you were there when they dragged Henry out of the fountain. Unfortunately, I was. The sight was terrible. I have to tell you something. I feel responsible for what happened to him. Why would you say something like that, sir? Well, I... I ordered him to clean the fountain. He did not want to do it, but I insisted. You mustn't think that way, sir. Surely, if he had not been drunk, nothing would have happened. And I actually heard Dr. Herman say that his death occurred sometime after midnight. It is not your fault. Certainly, he would not be cleaning it in the middle of the night. Hmm. I really hope so. Bates is probably right. Henry most likely fell in there by accident. I think I will go now. I'll return to my work. I need a word with you, Robert. Yes, but I am quite busy at the moment. I won't keep you long. Yes, I'm listening. Did you speak with Collier? Yes, he detained me for over half an hour with those questions of his. So, what do you think about all of this? Me? Hmm. Collier's theory seems logical to me. I do not believe anyone would want to kill Henry. Henry drank himself to senselessness many times before, but this time he was unlucky enough to fall into the pond. 
Cold water certainly had something to do with the body's condition. Being a physician, I can certainly attest to that. You're probably right. Is there anything else you want to talk about? I have a lot of work to do today. Victoria is not willing to talk to me right now. Maybe you should talk to her instead. You need to consider her age, Samuel. She just needs some time to herself. I'll talk to her in the evening. You have mentioned often since I arrived that you have a lot of work. So, what are you working on? Oh, I would rather not bother you with the details. Let's just say I am carrying out specific research. Perhaps I will tell you more about it tomorrow, when I have some time. I need to leave for Ashbury this evening to check on some results. Oh, all right. I will go now. All right. Feel free to come back. has collapsed under its own weight. The old wing won't last much longer. Luckily, no one was here when it happened. The hole in the window lets cold wind and rain enter the room. If it rains like this tomorrow too, we'll have to patch the window up. According to both Bates and Collier, Henry's body was tangled up in algae when they found him. How could he possibly have drowned in this, though? Hmm. There's a deep footprint in the mud. It looks quite fresh. Whom does it belong to? I shouldn't have made Henry clean the fountain. How could I have known that something like that would happen? Something is glittering at the bottom. What could it be? Something is black. Could it be? The water. The water is murkier than yesterday. Closed and probably full of whiskey. Henry hid it here so as not to carry it. It's locked. Gardening tools and small tubes with fertilizer. Hmm. I can't see a bill of exchange anywhere. Where could Henry have put it? Deeds of some plants, maybe beans. It's full of dry leaves. Cans of paint and a tin with brushes lying on it.
door is open. Hmm. Someone must be down there. Wine cakes full of quality red. This well is from the era when the castle was under siege. It was supposed to connect the castle with an underground system of corridors, but that's merely old hearsay. No one has ever seen those corridors. Do you need anything, sir? I would like to ask you about something. Certainly, sir. Bates, can the fountain back in the garden be drained? Hmm. Yes, there is a big pump in the cellar. It controls the water flow for the whole castle. It is possible to adjust the water level. However, I do not think it is a good idea to drain it after what happened. And Detective Collier should probably be notified about it, sir. I am merely considering all the alternatives. We have the right to find out what happened. Do you understand? Yes, I do. In that case, it is probably best not to tell anyone. Is that what you meant, sir? Very much so. I think I will go now. I'll re They're full of clear. The cellar is quite cold, so the water is always cool. part of the entire water distribution system. It pumps the water in and out endlessly according to immediate needs. Water distribution controls. I have no idea which one does what. Bates, I would like a word with you. I'm listening, sir. Bates, that pump we talked about. Yes, sir. I think it is broken. Which valve controls the water level? The pump works all right, sir. Only one of the input valves broke off some time ago. The water level can still be adjusted using the other valves. It just takes a moment to figure out the right setup for what you want to do. How do I know if I have drained the fountain then? If I remember correctly, the second column from the right displays the level of water in the fountain. I will give it a try. I think I will go now. I'll return to my work.
ready. I can't see anything, just mud. Where is that shiny thing? A sign of some sort, or a symbol. This must be the thing that glittered at the bottom. A symbol similar to that from the tower wall. Strange, a new symbol beside another corpse. I'll take a picture of it, just like the first symbol. letter. It's addressed to Victoria. Madam, please regard this letter as one from an anonymous friend. One of your servants is not whom he pretends to be. You may find it interesting that he is an ex-prisoner. That he is an ex-prisoner and a thief. On several occasions, I watched him sneak quietly into the castle cellar using the old back door. I saw that person take away several bottles of some of the best vintages of your wine that you value so much. No doubt, some of your other valuables have also gone astray. I decided to write you this letter to prevent further stealing. The person's name is Morris. Hmm. Henry meant to blackmail Morris. I am curious as what to Morris will tell me about this. Some papers and a few coins. The bill isn't here. Where could he have put it? I would like to ask you about something, Bates. I'm at your service, sir. I found a letter in which Henry blames Morris for stealing the wine from our cellars. Did you know anything about it? Tell the truth, sir. Yes, I have a good clue as to who might be behind it. Why didn't you say anything? I didn't want Madam to have to worry about a couple bottles of wine after what just happened. There is so much wine in the cellar, sir. It seemed unlikely that anyone would notice a dozen bottles missing. Henry has written in his letter that Morris is an ex-prisoner and thief. Is that true? I do not believe that, sir. Morris is a brute, but he would not hurt anybody. He does what he is told. 
He does it well and never causes any trouble. Well, I'm not really so sure, Bates. I think I will go now. I'll return to my work. Yes, sir. I took a look around the fountain. Sir, why would you bother with such a thing? Why not just leave it up to that detective? Well, I can't help suspecting something's wrong about all of this. Two unfortunate accidents in such a short time? You said it, sir. They are accidents. Henry just got drunk as a stone, and this time his luck ran out. Maybe. But never mind. I have come because of something else. I found a footprint in the mud by the fountain's rim. But that's nothing strange. There must be lots of footprints there. Well, this one is fresh and much deeper than the other ones. The person who left it there must have limped badly or been carrying something very heavy. Are you suggesting it's mine? Well, why couldn't it be yours? It's mostly me who walks around the garden, and the footprint is probably from the morning I found him. Maybe. Sir, I told you I was home the whole evening. I've got no idea what happened that night. How do you know that it was nighttime? If I answer that now, could we stop returning to the subject? We shall see. I heard it from Dr. Herman when he was speaking with Collier. What else were they talking about? I was not really listening. I just overheard a couple sentences as I was walking by. Can I go now, sir? All right. I'll ask Dr. Herman myself. Maybe I'm suspicious of him unnecessarily. But maybe not. I'll go see Dr. Herman and find out what he knows about that footprint. Morris, I know you've been stealing wine from our cellars. Me, sir? Who told you that? No one told me. I read it in a letter that Henry wrote to Victoria. So what do you say about that? Well, I only took a few bottles, sir. I swear. There's such a lot of them in there, I thought nobody would notice. It won't happen again, I promise. Will you give me that letter, sir? All right, Morris. But I'm going to be watching you. Here it is. I will go then. All right, sir. Oh, Mr. Gordon. I would wish you a nice day, but that is not what it is today. To what do I owe your visit? Well, you told me yesterday to come over. Let us not discuss things outside in the rain. Please follow me. Better, is it not? Do you mind going down to the morgue with me? I have a lot of work to do. We can speak there. Not a problem. Let's go. Watch out for the steps. There is not much light in here, and the dampness can make your footing dangerous. So, what would you like to know? Dr. Herman, I'd like to ask you about something in connection with Henry's death. Mr. Gordon, 
It was my impression that this affair is currently being investigated by Detective Collier. Is that so? This affair, as you call it, happened in my garden. I have every right to be interested in it. All right. What do you want to know? I found a footprint right next to the fountain. It was quite deep and very recent. Yes, we noticed it. Collier made a record of it in his papers. I do not know what else I can tell you. Did you notice something odd about it? What do you mean? The person who left that footprint either limped or had been carrying something quite heavy. Hmm. You have an eye for detail, Gordon. That is exactly what Collier said. So? The trouble is, there are footprints all over the place, and they most probably all belong to your groom. What is his name again? Morris? Yes. You can exclude that one, though, if you thought of him as a potential murderer. Let me tell you why. I'm listening. I should not be telling you this, but it is your business in a way, too, so... I have been doing autopsies for over 15 years, and I have never seen anything like this before. Something seemed odd to me the very moment we dragged him out of the pond. His skin was entirely white. You see, I know what the body of a drowned man looks like even after a month, but this was different. He looked as if he did not have a single drop of blood left in his body. Maybe it was in the water. Impossible, Gordon. I told you I know what a drowned man looks like. I have not mentioned this to Collier, however. He would think I am going mad. I need to prove my theory first. So what have you found out? Exactly what I expected. No blood. Not a single drop of it anywhere. As though something squeezed the life out of him, like the juice from an orange, and disposed of its skin in that fountain. This is not like anything I have ever witnessed. I'm not a doctor, but I can see it's more than strange. This is not strange, Gordon. It is flat out impossible. Even if someone deliberately wanted to extract all of his blood, there would still be some remaining in the organs and muscles. So what's your opinion now? I have no theories yet as to what my conclusions should be. I have no sensible explanation for what I found, but so far, nothing is indicative of a violent death. Thanks for telling me this, Dr. Herman. Listen, no one except the two of us is aware of this fact, and I would prefer it to remain that way, for now. When you speak to Collier, do not tell him anything. I will tell him myself when the timing is appropriate. Understood. I'll say nothing. You can take my word for it. Now that is truly weird. I have returned as per our conversation yesterday. This won't take long. I would only like to ask a couple of questions. Let me guess. This is about William, right? Yes. You mentioned some bad burns on his body. On the chest area, to be more specific. Yes. So? So what? When we talked yesterday, you said you would tell me more about it. That is why I am here. Is that what I said? Well, I can only repeat what I have already told you. Massive burns on the chest caused by an unknown object. Is that all? An unknown object? What you're saying is different from what you already told me. I cannot remember. Those were just initial theories, anyway. I have recorded everything in the post-mortem account. Shall I quote from it? won't be necessary. It seems Dr. Herman has lost his memory since yesterday. Why is he concealing what he originally wanted to tell me after we had first met? That death report would interest me, but not in his presence. 
I spoke with Detective Collier about Henry's death. It was inevitable that he would end this way. He was a lost cause. What do you mean? Well, it certainly was not the first time something happened to that man after he drank himself into a stupor. I know this well because it was I who had to restore him to normalcy after the other bouts. It was not usually serious. However, on this occasion, he overestimated his capacity for drink for the last time. This is rather awkward. But you see, Henry had something important that belongs to me. I have looked just about everywhere and have not found it. So it occurred to me that he might have had it with him, and that you... So, what is this it supposed to be? Actually, it's just a small piece of paper, but it's very important. Otherwise, I would not ask you. You want me to search his personal belongings? I would be grateful if you would do that, Doctor. Gordon. That parcel is part of the evidence. I cannot just remove something and give it to you until the police have completed their investigations. But that something was mine. No matter. Until the case is officially closed, I cannot even show you any of those things. I understand. Thank you, Doctor. At least I know where that blasted bill of exchange is. held shut by a large padlock. A lot of torn papers are on the top. Hmm. Somebody must have disposed of them only a little while ago. They're not wet. I'll have a look at them. It was torn to pieces. Obviously, they didn't want anyone to read it. Dear H, my next delivery will reach you next soon. Delivery will reach you soon. You need not worry. Everything has gone smoothly. No one knows anything, and that is how it is going to stay. Do not forget that what I am doing here is for the good of science, and without your help, I would be unable to continue my research. I will send you my results, 
as usual, within the next month. H. Herman is likely the addressee, but who's hiding behind the R? What kind of delivery are they talking about in that letter? Samuel Gordon, uh, please let me in, Doctor. I need to speak to you. Yes, come in. I am downstairs, in the mall. A model of a human skeleton watching over the hall, like a quiet guard in the darkness. for death reports himself. The bottom is stained, probably by dried blood. Herman uses it to carry the bodies. There are some things contaminated with blood. I'm not going to mess with it. Dr. Herman, I would like to speak to you. Just a moment. So, what brings you here? I've noticed the place can also serve as a dark room. Yes, I'm developing the autopsy photographs here. No one provides such services in the village. It is almost like the Middle Ages around here. Nevertheless, one eventually gets used to it. Are you asking because you'd like to have some photographs developed? You see, Gordon, this is not a copier for tourists. You are standing in a mall. Oh yes, that's quite apparent. I only need very few pictures, though. Hmm. All right, then. But I will only do this because of my friendship for your family. Give it to me. Thank you, Doctor. Hold on. I would like something in return. I cannot get you the picture without it anyway. I have run out of toll. Would you bring me some from the village? Didn't you just say that no one could provide that kind of service in the village? Yes, and they do not. I have an agreement with old Murray. He orders me supplies from town. Tell him the toner is for me. He will gladly sell it to you. Right. I'll be back. Hello, Harry. Welcome back, Mr. Gordon. Have you come to get a bite? What do you mean? Oh, come on. I know your Bates is not exactly a great cook. It's not so bad. I have no reason to complain. All right, if you say so. Do you remember our conversation yesterday on how nothing ever happens around here? Sure I do. Well, unfortunately, something did happen. Oh, you mean Henry. How do you know? Well, news travels around here fast. Poor Henry. He was a good regular. We sure drank a fair amount together. So how long had you known one another? Since the time he started working for the manor. 
which in fact means the day he arrived here. I remember when he first showed up, all sweaty with a suitcase in each hand. He took no time to order the two pints right away. I knew right off that we would understand each other. Did he have any friends in the neighborhood? Hmm, probably not. You see, he was kind of a loner. I don't think he knew anyone else. He used to only come here. Thanks anyway, Harry. You're welcome, Mr. Gordon. I have nothing to ask for. Excuse me, may I speak with you? Sure you can, young man. How long are you going to stay here today? As long as it takes. Eh, the whole day, unless it stops raining. What a better way to spend a rainy day. Good luck then. I must go now. Good morning. Might be good for you. What do you want? You said yesterday that you used to help in our garden. A couple of times, yes. So you knew Henry, our gardener, right? Yes. I don't want to talk about him after what has happened. When did you last speak with him? Well, yesterday evening. I met him just a short distance off the road to the village. What time was that exactly? I don't want to talk about it. I already told you that. I don't feel like getting involved in anything. I'm not the police. You needn't worry. What did you speak about? It was just a couple of sentences. I'm not sure. Was he acting normal? I mean, was he sober? Yeah, he was, that's for sure. It's true that he used to drink a lot, but he didn't drink every day. And yesterday, he was sober. Oh, I would have noticed. Thanks for telling me. You're welcome. So, Henry was still sober in the evening, and they found him drowned at dawn. That doesn't make much sense. Mr. Samuel, what a great big bang that was, eh? The second greatest today, I'll bet. Hi, Vic. Are you counting the thunder? Right. Why are you sitting here like this in the rain? Wouldn't you rather be at home? I don't mind the rain. A and also, I can't go home. You can't? You're in trouble, aren't you? Well, it's that broken window from yesterday. Harry told my dad, you know, so I'm not exactly carrying home. Oh, I see. I have to go now. Be careful of the windows next to you. I will. Throwing my ball to the other side would be a lot safer. Good morning. How can I help you? Dr. Herman told me I could get some photographic toner here. Have you got any? You're lucky. I've still got a couple of bottles left. I don't go to town every day, you see. Here it is. Thanks. A 
few days ago, a man pawned a certain object here. An article similar to this one. I remember Henry pawned something that looked like that. Yes, that's true. I'd like to redeem the object. Certainly, sir. It's 35 pounds. And I require the bill of exchange with the owner's signed agreement, of course. I'll give you the money, but you see, I haven't got that bill. Sir, surely you know that I cannot return any pawned object without the corresponding bill of exchange. I can understand why you do not want to release it without the bill, but I will pay for it. I'm sorry, that's the rules. That object is very important to me. I am willing to pay a special price. That's possible, but how fair would it be to the owner if I sold their property to somebody else within the pawn period? According to the rules, the object belongs to them until the expiration date of the note has been passed. Murray, Henry can't possibly redeem it. How do you know that? He's dead. Dead? I'm truly sorry to hear that, but I'm afraid the owner's death changes nothing. The person who presents a valid bill of exchange and pays the designated price can redeem the object at any time, then. Please try to understand that I haven't got it. Wouldn't the money be enough? I'm sorry. You can wait until the pawn period expires. That's not an option. In that case, I'm afraid I can't help you, sir. I know you would break the rules, but who could possibly find out? I am willing to pay triple the price for it. Triple, you say? Hmm... No, that's quite impossible. I don't want to lose my license because of your offer. Although I've got to admit it's very decent. So how much money do I need to convince you? It seems you don't understand me. I'm not going to do this for any price you could possibly offer to pay. This pawn shop is all I have and I'm not going to risk losing it. But who would know about our deal? We can keep it between the two of us. Sorry, I'm not changing my position. No bill of exchange translates to no release. Very well, then. If I bring the bill and pay the holding price, will you give it to me? Of course I will. Hmm. I thought he was more into money. I must find Henry's bill of exchange. No matter what, Murray isn't going to give me anything without it. Bye. How can I help you? I want to ask about something. Harry, tell me, is Mark reliable? Well, that depends. He's not exactly a saint, you see. But I reckon he'll do what you tell him for a pound or two. May I bother you for a moment? Well, if you must, but not for long. I've been getting some good hands. Tom told me you worked for Dr. Herman from time to time. Tom tends to have a bit too much to say. I've been unemployed for some time now, so I've been taking what odd jobs are offered to me. I've got to make money somehow, and it sure is better to do stuff for Dr. Herman than that. Dirty bastard, Mary. Well, I need a certain favor from you. As a matter of fact, it has to do with Dr. Herman. Hmm. So what's the deal? This is what I want you to do. I'm listening. I need you to come to his house at a particular time and keep him busy for a couple of minutes. Ring the doorbell and wait until he comes upstairs. Talk about whatever you want. Just keep him there for as long as you can. Well, I don't quite like that plan to tell you the truth. He doesn't look exactly innocent, does it? Also, 
If Herman learnt about my getting involved in some scam on him, he'd never hire me again. Nah, you'd better find someone else for this. Look, I don't expect this for nothing. And that's supposed to be surprising? How much does Dr. Herman pay you? That depends on what he wants from me. No, you don't understand. I mean, what is the maximum he has ever paid you? Six pounds per day, with food, I guess. I'll give you ten. That's not bad for a couple of minutes, is it? Ten? Well, the money is nice, but... You see, these days I at least have a sure job from Dr. Herman. No, I can't do it. All right. I'll give you twenty. Take it or leave it. Twenty? Damn. I haven't had so much money clicking in my pocket for quite some time. Twenty pounds take home and it's a deal. Ten now and ten later. Mm. Okay then. What time should I show up? About a quarter an hour after I leave the pub. Make sure you're on time, otherwise you get nothing. Don't worry, I'll be there. I walked quickly to the morgue to get there before Mark. I hope he'll show up on time, as we have agreed. Yes? Samuel Gordon, uh, please let me in, Doctor. I need to speak to you. Yes, come in. I am downstairs, in the mall. Can I speak with you for a moment, Dr. Herman? Yes. But I told you I have no news. This needs time. So if you keep interrupting me... No, no. I'm here because of something else. Yes? Well, the thing is... So what is it you want, Gordon? I do not have the whole day for you. Where the blazes is that mark? Did you say something? No. You see, I just... Now, who could that be? Damn! Who is there? Wait for me here. I will return shortly. Of course. You needn't hurry. I thought my blood pressure was going to hit boiling point. Where's that bloody bill of exchange? Maybe I should start with this table. There's a label with Henry's name on this box. Henry's bill of exchange. Excellent. of plastic for making imprints. It could come in handy. Lots of things, but nothing I'd need. An old microscope. Is this what I think it is? is in this bundle. I wonder what Herman was disposing of so quickly. It must be the large one. The other keys are small. I can't pick it up right now. Herman would surely notice. I made an imprint of the key in the plastic. 
Herman is returning. I can hear him on the steps. Are you looking for something in particular? No, of course not. Well, I've never been to a morgue before. I'm just curious. You have some odd interests. I can see that. What were we talking about? Uh, I've forgotten completely. It can't have been anything important. So be it, then. I do not have the time to be talking to you constantly. No offense intended. Oh, it should be me who's apologizing. I won't disturb you any longer. See you, Doctor. Goodbye, Gordon. Yes? Samuel Gordon, uh, please let me in, Doctor. I need to speak to you. Yes, come in. I am downstairs, in the mall. I would like to ask you about something, Dr. Herman. Go ahead, Gordon. I have that toner for you. So, can you develop my film now? Why not? But come back later. I have to finish my work before I can do the pictures. What is so important about this film that you have come to me with it? You will see that for yourself, Doctor. They may be important, or they may be completely useless. I need to speak with you, Robert. Sure. Robert, I'd like to ask you a rather peculiar question. Peculiar? I am listening. Right. Here it is. Is it possible for a recently deceased body to be completely bereft of blood? No blood whatsoever. Certainly did not expect such a strange question. What do you mean? Well... Is there a way to drain the blood out of the body? Let me think. No, I believe it's quite impossible. A lot of blood remains in a person, even after they have bled to death, if that is what you mean. Strange, indeed. Why are you asking this? Does it have anything to do with Henry's death? Yes, it does. I spoke with Dr. Herman. He told me Henry's body was entirely devoid of blood. You probably just didn't understand him. No, I wouldn't say so. In fact, he said the same thing as you. He had never seen anything like it before. Why are you so interested in how Henry died? I'm aware it's a serious matter, but you did not even know him. It interests me when something like this happens in my home. Actually... I'm wondering why you don't seem to be interested. Well, I do not have time to worry about it right now. Henry created his own destiny, and now it is a case for the police. How come Robert isn't interested in this? I must go now. Right then. I'll return to my work. Is there anything I can do for you? I'd like to redeem the object we talked about, Murray. Surely you remember you must present a valid bill of exchange. Don't worry. 
I have it. Here. Hmm. Yes. Everything seems to be all right. It's forty pounds, sir. Didn't you say thirty-five at first? Oh, you're right. Excuse me, I've made a mistake. Sure. I'll go get it for you right away. Bye. The parts have clicked into one another. Samuel Gordon, uh, please let me in, Doctor. I need to speak to you. Yes, come in. I am downstairs, in the mall. Can I speak with you? Hold on a minute. Yes, I'm listening. Have you developed that film for me? Not yet, Gordon. I have work to do. Come back later. Harry, you know everyone around here. Would you happen to know someone who can make a key? Oh, well, I'm not sure if he's the man for the job, but Mark here has a few skills. Just ask him. All right. Thanks. Good morning. Good for you. What do you want? I need someone to make a key for me. Harry said you can do it. A key's no problem. Give me the original and I'll bring it back with a copy in a little while. And it's for free. I'll just assume it's part of our deal today. Trouble is, I only have an imprint. Hmm. That's going to be a lot harder. I've never tried it with an imprint before. Just give it to me and pick up the result in an hour or so. I'll see what I can do. Good. Here it is. See you later. Samuel Gordon, I need... Yeah. Doctor, can I have a word with you? Yes, all right. 
Doctor. Sure, I have put them on top of the sink over there. Thanks for your time. I'll put the pictures in my diary. about a pipe for Mr. Gordon. No thanks. Maybe later. Have you seen Mark around? No, he hasn't shown up yet. He's probably got some work to do. Are you looking for him? Hmm? Not really. Just asking. That boat on the other side of the river, is it yours? A lot of water has leaked into it. It is about to sink at any moment. Don't worry. It's older than I am. Thanks for telling me. Most people would not be so polite these days. No problem. I must go now. I'd sure. Have you seen Mark? He was supposed to wait for me here. Aye, he popped in just a moment ago, but went somewhere right away. But he's left this key for you here. Thanks. The stink of decaying flesh is forcing tears into my eyes. Disgusting. Tied up bags, oozing blood. I'm not touching that. Human remains. Shouldn't they be buried deep in the ground? Hmm, the pockets are empty, but I feel something hard inside. The gem has perfectly smooth edges. All the parts have clicked together perfectly. The church was built during the reign of Marcus Gordon the Merciful in 1230. 
Let this parish lead people to goodness of soul and trust in our Lord. The grate is locked. Father Frederick? Yes? Can I speak with you? Certainly, my son. I am listening. I am Samuel Gordon. It has been a long time since we last met, but I still remember you. I would like to thank you for what you said at the funeral. You need not thank me. It was the least I could do for William. Tell me, Father, what do you know about Marcus Gordon? He was a great man of his time. The exact opposite of his older brother. Mordred was a cruel antichrist. He would torture and abuse the innocent in mock trials. Thank God he didn't rule for long. Marcus convinced the peasants to rise in revolt, and they succeeded in overthrowing his reign. You can be proud to be of his blood, my son. Father, I'd like to talk with you about William. May he rest in peace. What is it that bothers you, my son? I know he came here often. Yes, just like many other people who confess regularly to relieve their souls. But I also know he came here at night. Can you tell me about that? Well, since it is you, I guess that I can. He kept asking me to let him into the old belfry. He was very insistent, and in the end, I fulfilled his wish. Have you any idea what he was looking for in there? I have not. He wanted to be alone, and I respected that. He always spent a lot of time in there, and then left exhausted. I really do not know anything more. I've heard they used to execute heretics in the attic here a long time ago. According to the Chronicles, the trials would have taken place exactly above where we are standing now. A strange place to build a church, don't you think? It was Marcus Gordon, your ancestor, who had the church built. He wanted to at least partially atone for the sins and injustice that occurred here. I believe he chose the right path. Father, may I make a confession? Of course. Would you like to do so now? Hmm? No, I meant later. Such things should not be put off. Believe me. I'll come back later. I promise. Have a look at this, Father. Have you any idea as to what it could be? I'm afraid I haven't. It's very old, I would say. Other than that... I'm sorry. I really have no clue. Father, I would like to ask you for a favor. I'm interested in having a look around the old belfry. But my son, the belfry is closed to the public. Why do you want to go there? I'm afraid I can't explain it at the moment. But it is very important. Believe me. All right, then. I will make an exception, then. But just for this once. Thank you. Follow me, please. I will leave you alone. I have to return to the church and serve others. Of course, Father. Thank you. Please tell me when you are done, so that I can lock the grate again. Of course. I have to figure out how William entered Marcus's tomb. I will not leave before I discover the entrance. A 
picture of the Madonna. It leads to the rear part of the graveyard. Several old pictures and a dusty inventory are lying in the shadows. I can't see anything interesting there. Hmm, its shape resembles that of the stone object. about in his diary. I have to figure out how it works. the right combination at last.
I've used it to call the altar. I've used it. It's the same as the one upstairs. It's the same as... What's that? Entrance has closed. I must open it somehow. The pages are well preserved. I'll have a look. It can't be seen, but it can be heard. It will not speak unless it's spoken to. Shall wisdom be your way? The Saint Four, the year of the Lord, 1243. Take away, the larger it grows. Cities without houses, rivers without water, forests without trees. Works. Shall wisdom be your way? The more you take away, the larger it grows. Cities without houses, rivers without water, forests without trees.
black when hot, red when used, grey when thrown out. First Gordon. There is no man today who would remember the origin of the gate of the two worlds, the Black Mirror. This record shall be a warning to all who blindly long for power, not hesitating to stray from the path of fate, exposing their soul to dark forces. Mordred, the lord of our manor, an amoral, evil man plagued the people of these lands for many long years with his ill nature and hatred. His power, however, was soon ended by Marcus, newly returned from the battles with the disbelievers in distant lands. Well acquainted with the habits of his enemy, Mordred made meticulous preparations to withstand the attack of his brother. Realizing that not even the strong walls of the castle could hold against the onslaught forever, he descended into the underground of the chapel. There, he opened within its heart the black mirror and urged the entities of shadow to help prevent his doom. He was not the only one, however, to know of the secret corridors below the castle. By the hand of fate, the balance of power began to lean towards Mordred's side. There was not much time left. Watching his men die around him, Marcus understood what had to be done. Overwhelmed by fury, he battled his way through many lines of enemies into the labyrinth of corridors leading to the heart of the underground cathedral. With haste, he took advantage of the momentary surprise and thrust his sword with all his might against his brother. Righteous anger hit its target and cold steel pierced the black heart of the traitor. Victory was within grasp. Staggering on the edge of a bottomless abyss, Mordred gathered his last ounce of strength and brought forth his final desperate deed. With merciless hatred and zealous rage of his defeat, he pronounced the dark words of the curse. Of your blood, others will rise with your name, bearing my curse. One of your heirs will convert five souls of five mortals. This will be the catalyst to bring my anger back to life. And I will return. When your days have ended, there will be no one to stop me. Mordred then fell to his knees, and the throat of the Black Mirror closed as he took his terminal breath. In that instant, the whole place was filled by a deafening sound and blinding light, followed by an absolute silence. And one last thing to be done. Four keys of power were divided by Marcus among the lords of the Gordon Manors, the fifth key remaining with Marcus himself. Never again would the keys meet in the hand of a mortal to open the gate between the worlds of good and evil. Such is the story of our Lord, that saved us in the dark ages. Let his soul rest in peace forever. Isidore Vale, in memory of Marcus Gordon, 1240 AD. Black Mirror, the secret chapel the book mentions must be somewhere below the castle. I'll obtain the five keys and finish what William couldn't. This must be the key William wrote about in his diary, the first of the five.
can't see anything over there. I'll stay in the light for a moment. I can't see anything interesting. Hmm. Where did it run? have hurt my arm. Could have been worse, though. At least I'm alive. A mechanism of some sort with three levers. With a bit of luck, it might still work. A rusty valve. It might be feeding the fuel somewhere. setup. I've got to keep trying. Excellent. Everything's going to be easier with light. Here are the things I lost when I fell down the shaft. Most of the items are all right. The camera is smashed. won't be obstructing my way any longer. on the other side of the door. I'll try to get my hand through to reach the key. Got it. shaft. How many of these are there in here? Maybe I'll never make it to the surface again. I 
wonder how he died. The door is tightly shut. A system of fuses and cables. Nothing I could use. A system of nothing I could use. Lift shaft. The lift is my only chance to get to the surface. Hopefully, I'll be able to call it somehow. It's very rusty, but still in one piece. A big barrel full of oil. It's broken. I could try starting the machine, but I don't know how. Dirty water with oil in it. There might be something under that lid. There might be... I have to push it off somehow in order to get to the lid. No way. It's too heavy. I'll try piercing through the plate with the sharp end of the rod. This should do the trick. The lid won't move. I tied one end of the rope to the lid. I tied... All I need to do now is push away the trolley. I have to get rid of the brake stop. I think it could work. Nothing.
It's entirely dark in here. The power circuit is probably interrupted. There's a lock on it. It looks like a power distribution circuitry box. It can't be opened. It has loosened. I must reconnect the circuit. Last! I'd say this used to be the lift room. Who could it have been? I found a small key. Maybe it will help me get outside. May 29th. Everything has gone smoothly today. Another day gone without any malfunction. Today. Another day without any malfunction. Except for the dreadful heat here. A horrible 55 degrees. If it were not for the drinks from the surface, we would all drop dead from thirst. May 30th. One of the three vent shafts seems to be clogged. The men say something must be stuck in it. That would explain the horrible heat. I have to go to the vent shafts and check out the whole area this afternoon. May 31st. Something has entirely clogged vent 2. It's going to take a while before we can remove it. It's almost halfway through and quite large. Tomorrow we shall discover what has been causing the heat in here. June 1st. We finally dragged out the thing that was clogging the second vent today. It was a body. One of the new workers must have fallen down the vent. Nobody knows his identity yet. The body must have been there for quite a while. And the heat here! June 15th. The last fortnight has been peaceful. No major malfunctions. June 18th. Old Morton has gone mad. They found him at the end of the new corridor, just sitting there, gazing into space. No one managed to get a sensible word out of him. He just kept mumbling about some ghost. Perhaps he has breathed in too much gas. I had him taken to the doctor. June 19th. We had another ghost episode this afternoon. Ugh, such nonsense. There must be a gas leak around here somewhere. We'll carry out a reading tomorrow morning. June 22nd. We examined the entire corridor and found nothing. No gas. However, three more men had to be taken out today. Nobody knows what is wrong with them. They keep saying the same rubbish as old Morton. If it goes on like this, the mine will have to close down. And Fuller won't be too keen on that. June 23rd. It took me an hour to persuade those cowards into the hoist today. Nobody wants to work in the new corridor. They're afraid of the ghost. I had to agree to shut it down. Otherwise, I'd have to go into the mine alone. Day one. Something terrible has happened. I heard strange, damn strange sounds coming from above the lift shaft. And then it happened. A nerve-shattering scream, and the sound of a tremendous crash. I don't know how many minutes or hours have passed since then, but when I regained consciousness, I was on the other side of the room, and my mouth was full of dirt. I believe a couple of my ribs are broken, and my left arm is so swollen, I can barely move it. 
I don't know if I'll be able to crawl out of the lift room in this condition. Day two. It's no use. All my attempts to break out of here have been unsuccessful. Something must have fallen on the ladder access lid. Damn it. The only other way out is by lift, but it is not working. I hope someone will open the lid for me from above. Otherwise, oh, I fear what will happen. Day three. I estimate I've been in this bloody hole for three days already. I'm very hungry, but my thirst is worse. Thank God for all the moisture. I'm drinking water from the pools under the pipes. My arm hurts badly. I cannot raise it anymore. My whole body aches from screaming. But nobody can hear me. The only possibility is that damned lid. Or the lift. But I can't do anything about it from here. How ironic. Day four. I am getting weaker. I know I won't make it much longer. My arm is in flames. And I'm running out of candles. The light is barely flickering. If nobody finds me soon, I am going to die from blood poisoning. Or slowly from hunger and thirst. Without light, it will be much worse than even now. I know that these are my last words, but I don't know what to write. Maybe just... If somebody finds this and takes it out to the surface, please, bury me like a proper man. Farewell. A revolver. I'll take it. Hopefully, it will still work. There are some old bullets here. Let's hope they aren't useless. Technical drawings and plans for a machine of some kind. There were just two bullets in the box. I'll try to get it to start with the help of those plans. Steam is running out through one of the pipes. I should block that hole with something. I would burn myself. I block the hole in the pipe. The 
machine couldn't take a full power input, damn it. One of the fuses has blown. I'll try using the fuse from this box in the lift room generator. should work with this fuse. It's running full power now. I should try to call the main lift. Maybe it will work and I'll get out of here finally. is operational. This is the highest floor. I should be out of here with only a little effort now. The grate is closed with a padlock chain. I need to aim better. right side of the lock is quite rusty. Maybe I'll be able to break it somehow. I must aim carefully and hit the most fragile part of the lock. A perfect shot. The padlock is down. The way is free. I did it. This isn't looking good. I scrambled through the vast area of the woods and set off for the castle. I was lucky today. I thought I would never make it out of the depths of the mines. Oh, Samuel. Come, join us. You look terrible, Samuel. Did something happen? No, it's just that I've had a difficult day. I'm all right. You came in rather late. 
I did want to have a word with you, but I have to leave for the sanatorium in a short while. Now? At night? Yes. There is a problem that cannot wait. Can't you put it off to tomorrow morning? Unfortunately, I cannot. What's this about, then? I don't... I do not know exactly myself. I will determine the situation when I arrive there. It must not be anything serious. You need not worry, Victoria. Please return as soon as possible. I do not like your going there at night in this terrible weather. It's late already. I must go now. See you tomorrow, Samuel. Goodbye. Be careful, Robert. Do not fear. I'll be leaving for Wales tomorrow, Victoria. I should return in two days. To Wales? May I ask why? Oh, uh, just for a visit. Haven't seen dear Eleanor for a very long time. I will write a letter to her first thing in the morning. Will you take it to her along with my greetings? Of course. Thank you. I'll go to my room now, Victoria. I need to take a rest. Of course, Samuel. According to William's diary, the next key has to be in the Wales Manor. I must not delay. I'll set off tomorrow. I awoke, drenched in sweat today. My past memories are haunting me, even in my dreams. I should not have returned. I cleared my thoughts and decided to carry on with what I had begun. I set off for our family's manor in Wales, so that I could finish what William couldn't. I hope Eleanor will not refuse my visit. I don't even know whether she'll still remember me. According to William's diary, the next key must be somewhere at the manor. I have to obtain it. However, I have no clue as to where to start looking. The grate is locked. I'll wait for a while. Maybe the ringing was too short for anyone to hear me. seems that the wires inside barely connect. Maybe if the blade were thinner. The left leg of the statue is broken off. There's a nail stuck in the column.
it wasn't at all hard to pull out. I'll try to stick the nail under the doorbell so that it connects the wires. That seems to have helped. Someone's coming. What do you want, sir? Madame Eleanor is not expecting anyone today. I am Samuel Gordon from Black Mirror. I am here to visit Eleanor. Take me to her, please. I'm sorry, sir, that's quite impossible. What do you mean? Pardon me, you said you were a Gordon? Yes, Samuel Gordon, the son of Randall Gordon. I'd like to trust you, but I can't. There have been some problems recently, and I've got to be very careful about who I let in. Maybe if you could prove your identity somehow, sir. I must say, I expected a warmer reception. I'm sorry, sir, I must insist. I hope you will find this to be sufficient proof of my identity. It's William Gordon's mourning card. He is one of the reasons why I have come. Of course, sir. I apologize for the disbelief. Some oodlums tried to rob us a short while back, hence the extra caution, you see. I understand. May we go in now? Follow me. I'll see you inside. <clears throat> Pardon me, madam. Yes, Louis. I see we have a visitor. This is Samuel Gordon. He has come from Castle Black Mirror. Oh, yes. I know who he is, Louis. That's all right. Is your memory failing you? I hope you welcomed our guest warmly, Louis. I didn't know who he was, madam, and therefore I didn't want to let him in. Welcome to Wales, Samuel. Hopefully Louis didn't annoy you too much. No, madam. He explained the reasons for his cautious behavior. We need to be extra careful these days. We were almost robbed last week. But that is probably of little interest to you. So why are you delighting me with your visit? Can we speak in private? I understand. Louis, can you return to your duties now? Certainly, madam. Thank you. I am so glad you have come, Samuel. I have not seen anyone from the family in years, and time passes so slowly here. Tell me, how long are you planning to stay with us? Several days, I expect, but I don't know yet. Only a few days? That's a pity. Victoria wrote about what had happened to William. I liked him very much. He was a great man. I regret not attending the funeral, but I am weak, and a long journey might affect my health further. I explained everything to Victoria in a letter. I hope she is not angry with me. Do you know whether she received my letter? I have not received a reply, and I do not know what to think about it. But I have her reply here. I promised to deliver it. Really? You are very kind. I am not keen on waiting in uncertainty. I will read it this evening. But surely you have not come just to deliver a letter. Madam, do you know this man? He reminds me of someone, but I may be mistaken. Am I supposed to know him? Oh, I believe so. It's William's protege. James! I didn't recognize him in this older picture. I only knew him as a little boy. Oh, where could he be now? He is in Robert's care, in the sanatorium in Ashbury. Is he 
still poor lad. James was quite normal when he was young, but as he matured, that strange illness of his got worse. And he started to regress rapidly. That is why in the end, William put him in Robert's hands. Poor boy. I'm glad you told me. At least I can pray for him. I remember the last time I was here as well. However, I'm a little surprised that you remembered me. Of course I remember you. I have not lived here all my life. You know, I also spent some years at the Black Mirror Castle. My memory is the only thing that still serves me well. You were very young then. I can certainly understand that you would not remember the boring visits of relatives from afar. I would also like a word with Richard. Can you tell me where I can find him? Richard? My husband? I do not know. We barely see one another. I will tell you why before you ask. It's that damned chemistry lab of his and all those nonsensical experiments. You see, when he was young, he was an avowed scientist but never made his breakthrough. Years ago, he stopped his experiments for a long time, and I thought it was for good. But lately, the old fool has returned to those silly experiments and would rather spend his time with a microscope and formulae rather than with me. So you don't know where I can find him? I am angry with him right now. I am not interested in the least what he is doing or where he is. I forbade him to carry out any experiments in the mansion because I am afraid something might happen. If you want to talk to him, go to the old house in the garden. Most of the time, he closets himself in there with his chemicals. Surely, you will be able to find him. May I know which room you plan to make available for me this evening? Louis will get the East Room ready for you. It is cozy and warm. You are my guest. Thank you. Do you know that after having traveled a whole day, I almost did not make it past your main gate? Yes, I do. Louis did not want to let you in. You must forgive him. He's only doing what he has been told. Oh, it wasn't just Louis. The doorbell doesn't work. Oh, well, this whole place is falling apart. Many things do not work anymore. The mansion is slowly deteriorating. Richard does not care about these things, and I cannot manage it all alone. I'm glad I at least have Louis to help me. Without him, the garden would have become desolate a long time ago. Would you please tell Louis to fix that silly doorbell? Certainly. Tell me, madam, when did you last see William? Hmm. That was a very long time ago. Yes, I do remember. He came to visit me two years ago, along with Robert. It was nice to see them again after such a long time. How long did they stay? Less than a month, I think. Why are you asking about it anyway? I'm picking up certain pieces of a puzzle. I see. Do you remember any significant occurrence from that visit? Did William behave normally? I do not remember him behaving in a... Or maybe, as I recall, he was enormously interested in our family tune. That surprised me. He seemed quite obsessed with it. In fact, he kept asking me about it all the time and finally convinced me to take him inside. I did not want anyone to disturb my ancestor's rest, but I eventually gave in. I don't know what he'd been after, though he did not want to answer any of my questions even though I asked him directly. That day, he really did behave strangely. 
Killian was inside the tomb. However, he found nothing, just as he recorded in his diary. You most probably are aware of the curse that has harassed our family for so long. What do you think about it? The curse of the Gordons? You would not believe such a tale, would you? Being a young man of the modern age, Samuel. The chronicles state that Durgham Gordon found his final rest somewhere at this manor. Perhaps this refers to your family tomb. I do not think so. The tomb is old, but not older than 200 years. As far as I know, the tales about Durgham reach much farther into the past. The only thing I know of him is the memorial with his name. Even if the chronicles did not lie, his grave would have certainly fallen apart a long time ago. William knew that Durgham's key must be somewhere at the manor. I've got to get into that tomb somehow. I found William's personal diary, Eleanor. I read all the important records several times. He mentions the tomb you spoke about. Are you sure he did not tell you anything about it? Can you remember anything more from his visit? Much time has passed since then, Samuel. But my memory still serves me well. He did not give me any idea why he'd been interested in that place so much. Nothing at all. I understand. Eleanor, have you ever seen anything like this? No. What is it supposed to be? Oh, I hoped you would tell me. I'm sorry. According to William's diary, an object similar to this one should be somewhere here at the manor. I really have not seen anything like it before. Will you allow me to examine the grounds of the mansion? Gladly. Consider yourself at home. Just tell Louis that you are my guest. Look at these pictures. Do the images make any sense to you? No, I'm afraid they don't. So what do the symbols mean? I'm not sure myself, but I hope to find out. I think I'll go now. A common mirror. Nothing special. It's carved from dark mahogany. The lid hosts a chessboard with only nine fields. The wood is crackling within the flames. The whole room is comfortably warm. The coat of arms of the Wales branch. Our family line is much older. Matthias Gordon, Eleanor's father. He was a famous piano virtuoso in his time. May we talk? What do you want? Do you know that the bell on the main gate is not working? Yes, I'll know, but I only have one pair of hands. When I'll have finished with other things, I will attend to it. Well, you really should go fix it right away. It is Eleanor's wish. Okay, I will get this done and then I'll fix it. I think I'll go now. Sir. That path leads to the old garden. Visitors are not permitted back there. Madam has given me permission, as her guest, to go wherever I please. Oh. In that case, it's all right, sir.
The hose is fixed to the faucet with a strong wire. I'll get it off. An old water ditch. It could be quite deep. Now it's overgrown with bushes and tall grass. According to what Eleanor said, Richard should be somewhere inside this old house. It seems to be deserted. Locked. It seems that the key is in the lock on the other side. seems abandoned. The bottom is completely blackened. These do not look like cigarette or cigar ashes. Old advertisement papers, a page with technical literature. Two ads are marked in red. Just a few sheets of paper, some cards, and two test tubes. Where did it run? Where is it? It's not in the cabinet. I can't see anything there. The cabinet is too dark. Cartridge is full of blue ink. Just dirty paper. No. They're actually newspaper clippings. I'll have a look. A young, talented chemist acquires further appreciation. For the second time this year, a promising chemist, Richard Gordon, is attracting well-deserved attention. It has now been a week since he mentioned his work would deliver many improvements to the methodology of mammal blood research. Let's wish him good luck in his work. His research will bring fresh ideas to the domain of biochemistry. Daily Times. 19. The text that follows is illegible. I didn't know we had a famous chemist in the family. Completely rotten. Just soot and ashes. Tools for maintaining the fireplace. It's tightly shut. Cigarette lighter. It appears to be missing a wick. An old candle with a firm wick. 
It's missing a wick. Other than that, it might work. Hmm, let's try something. should be usable now. There is a latch. The back of the cabinet can be pushed off. Blazes are you? I am Samuel Gordon. You scared me half to death. What do you want? Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't know somebody would be here. How did you get in? Behind an old cabinet, I discovered a passage to a small staircase leading downward. I descended into the darkness and felt a doorknob on the landing. And when I opened the door, why did you sneak in so quietly, like a thief? I was about to say something, but you instantly spotted me. Hmm. I'm glad you aren't lying, at least. The sample in that flask was the last I had of that substance. I'm sorry to have caused you trouble. It was not intentional. Your apology will not help me now. I urgently need that substance for an experiment I'm planning to carry out this evening. How can I help you then? Would you want to? I'll try. Great! The flask contained an EX-52 oxidant. It's neither uncommon nor expensive, but it was my last bit, and I'm not getting any until a new package arrives next week. Next week? Well, this place is just too far away from about everything. You cannot even get a stain cleaner in the surrounding villages. So where am I supposed to get a hold of this Occident? I'd tell you if I knew. You could try Leechdale, but you would have to be back by dusk. You should be able to be here on time if you hurry. There's a drugstore in the square. That's where you want to go. Okay, I'll see what I can do. It's a boron Occident, EX-52. Write it down. Make sure of the color, a vigorously saturated blue. You can't possibly confuse it with anything else. I understand. And now, please excuse me. I have a lot of work to do. Or on accident. Oh, great. I'll take one. This is what is left of the Occident that I must get somehow. Hmm. The label reads, Occident EX-52.
I'll fill it with water. I spilt all the ink from the pen into the glass. It's empty, just ashes. It lit up. This must be it, Durgham Gordon's tomb. I've got to get inside somehow. The water in the kettle is already boiling. This is what is left of hmm. Hmm, let's try something. Good, I managed to get the label off the shard. May we talk? What do you want? So what is with the doorbell? It's broken. What did you expect? It shouldn't take me long to fix it. I'll just need to find out what the problem is. All right. I think I'll go now. I can't mess with the toolbox while he's around. He would notice. Yes, this place is very beautiful. That reminds me, is Louis still working in the garden? Yes, he's fixing the doorbell at the main gate. Can you please ask him to leave that for later and mow the lawn? Of course, I'll tell him. You are so kind.
May we talk? What do you want? Louis, Eleanor asked that I tell you to mow the lawn. I know my duty, sir. I have no time for that at the moment. Okay. I think I'll go now. Well... Uh... Yes? I told Louis he should trim the lawn, but he insisted on fixing the doorbell first. Oh, did he? He's hard-working and reliable, but sometimes it is difficult to get him to leave work that he has begun. Tell him that I wish him to mow the lawn right away, especially around the house. I don't want to be disturbed by that horrible sound in the evening when I'm playing. Sure. May I ask what that composition is that you are playing? It is from a distant memory. I love this song. It has so much melancholy in it. If you are interested, I could play some more for you in the evening. That would be delightful. I conveyed your message to Louis. He'll fix the doorbell by the evening. Thank you. I think I'll go now. May we talk? What do you want? Louis, madam. Really? Oh, well. You must be finished before it gets... Right, right. I think I'll go now. A strong blue. I'll take it. A firm wire. This should be it. The oxidant is ready. I just hope that Richard won't be examining the contents too closely. I've gotten the substance you need. Oh, did you? Excellent, excellent. I'm surprised you're back so soon. You must have hurried. Well, uh, yes. No matter. The important thing is I can go back to the original variant. Thank you, young man. You have helped me a great deal. Oh, uh, it was nothing. I only hope Richard doesn't find out about the Occident before I'm long gone. When did you last see William? Oh, that must have been many years ago. I would have to try to remember. Some eight years back, I would say. Why are you asking? He was here about two years ago. Did you not see him? Was he? No, I have not. I am not interested in these family visits. You see, I have a lot of work. Have you any idea what this could be? Hmm, I haven't. But it's silver. I don't think I can tell you anymore. 
I'll leave you to your work then. Part of the stone fence that the wall could no longer bear. It's sinking into the earth, saturated by the swamp. The same species as the other shrubs in the garden. This one doesn't blossom though, strange. Perhaps the dampness from the nearby swamp is affecting it, who knows? The grate is locked. It must have been here for hundreds of years. It may be as old as the ruins of the church behind it. The swamp in the rear part of the garden could be quite deep. I cannot go there. Pardon me, can I ask you something? Yes. Do you know who has the key to the gate of a tomb by the swamp? You want to go inside? Maybe. I can't help you with that. There's only one key as far as I know. And I haven't got it. Who then? Don't know. I'm not interested in the past. Ask my wife. She looks after the place. Or try Louis. He has the key to every lock around here. Thanks. I will. If it's Eleanor who has the key... I have a problem. I have no choice but to try Louis. I'll leave you to your work then. say to him if he saw me. Bundle of keys. Great. I'll borrow it for a little while.
This is where I should be looking. I can feel it. The key can't be too far. Vienna doesn't sound familiar. Oh dear. Hmm. Malite. Maybe it's a name. The bowl is empty. Odire, Malite, do you know what they mean? Hmm, they sound like ancient names to me. Do you know what those names mean? Well, it's not something I'm familiar with, but if you give me a bit of time, I may find the answer here somewhere. Thanks, I will ask later. I'll leave you. I've got quite a bit of work to do. Hurry up. Have you managed to discover the meanings of those three words? Yes. Maybe it won't be entirely accurate, but they do make some sense. The first one is apparently the name of an ancient Irish god of strife. The second one was more difficult, but I believe it's the name of the druid goddess of the harvest. The third one was quite simple. It is the old name of the god of the waters of the earth. Hmm. Interesting. Thanks for your time. You're welcome. It was actually quite entertaining to go through the dictionary again. I know of you from some old newspaper clippings. A write-up of your research on mammal blood. That was a very long time ago. Nowadays, I only do electrochemistry. I need something from you. Would you help me? From me? What would that happen to be? I don't know how to explain this properly, so I'll be direct. I need some blood. An ounce or so. What? Well, that really cannot be exactly easily explicable. You have all sorts of chemicals and substances around here, so it occurred to me... That I might have this as well. Well, hold on. I'll probably be able to fish something out for you. There should be some leftovers from my former experiments in the freezer here. An ounce shouldn't be a problem. Oh, so I can have it? It's all yours. Take it for whatever you need. Should you need some more, or maybe human? <laughs> well, I just ran out of it. Very funny. I'll leave you to your work then. down. I often have headaches these days. I'd better keep them. A 
dead shrub. Strange, the soil here is of different colour than anywhere else in the garden. I poured the blood into the bowl. I poured the soil into the bowl. I poured the water into the bowl. I can hear something. What are you doing there? How did you get in? Give me those keys for God's sake. I just wanted to see the inside of that chapel. Nobody is allowed to enter it. If Madam learned you were inside, it would be my fault. Guarding this place is one of my responsibilities and Madam is relying on me to do it. If you don't tell her, she won't ever know. Well, you're lucky. I would get in bigger trouble than you for letting you in there. Damn, how could he have found me here? I've got to get inside again, but how? It would probably be best to return at night. Pardon me, can I ask you something? Yes? Do you remember our talk about the tomb? Yes, I do. Did you manage to get inside? Yes and no, but I still want to examine it thoroughly. You're starting to interest me, young man. Why have you come to Wales anyway? And why are you so interested in our tomb? Unfortunately, I cannot explain the whole thing just now. I fail to see what draws you to that place so much. I have to get inside somehow, that's all. But? But Louis won't let me. Louis makes no trouble. He's just doing what he is told. If it was something else, I'd settle it for you. But the tomb is a problem. Eleanor is very respectful of her ancestors and guards the place as if it were a shrine. I can't do much about it, you see. Yes, 
But no one will find out. I promise. I just need the key for an hour or two. No, that's quite impossible. Eleanor takes the key from Louis in the evening and keeps it in her bedroom for the night. What do you suggest, then? Me? Well, maybe. I can't promise anything, but if you help me out, I'll make it easier for you to get inside. I'll do what is needed. So what's the plan? I'll explain everything later, but I have a couple of rules. First, you will come down here when it's dark. Second, you must not tell anyone. Why are you doing this anyway? You mean why am I helping you? I have my reasons, just like you have yours. So, how is it? I will do anything if you get me inside. All right, we have a bargain then. I'll leave you to your work then. I'll go to my room and rest a while. I've got to get into that tomb again in the evening. I waited until the last sound had quieted in the mansion so I could be sure I could leave my room unnoticed. This place looks entirely different at night. There's no way to see inside from here. Richard has locked himself in. Did he forget about our agreement? I need to draw his attention somehow. I'll try to hit the window. Missed. I hope they hear that inside. I'd better go to the door quickly. I've been expecting you. Follow me. So is everything clear? Yes, I believe it is. I'd better describe the whole process once more. 
No, that won't be necessary. I understood everything. You will have to assist me. Follow my orders exactly during the whole experiment. Agreed? Of course. Variant 2. Variant 2. Variant 7 follows. Nice and simple. So it has time to mix. I understand. Back to Variant 2. Number 3 will follow. 2 and 3 follows. Now we must wait a little. Right. This is the moment. From now on, it's going to be easy. Just keep turning it down as I told you. Yes. Easy. Easy. Keep going. Right then, we're mostly done. We just need to add the oxidant. Oxidant? What oxidant? The one you managed to break this afternoon. What luck you had catching the druggist. Well... Maybe I should tell you something. Hurry up, then. The time's almost up. The oxidant. You see, it actually isn't... No! How could this happen? I checked my calculations to the smallest detail. A mistake was inconceivable. Well, maybe... You needn't apologize. It's not your fault. I must have made a mistake with the ratio somewhere. Damn. Yes, everyone makes mistakes. Well, you have fulfilled your part of our agreement. Now it's my turn. It's right there by the door. That green flask. Lask, you promised to get me inside the tomb. I have promised to make it easier for you to get inside. You must realize I could not look Eleanor in the eye if she found out I had lent you the key. Sure, but what do I do with that flask? The container is of little importance. It's the content that matters. It's a strong concentrated acid that will dissolve most metals on the table of elements. That should do the trick for you. Right. We'll see how strong this acid is. Very well. The lock has fallen off. A stone lock, maybe it... A secret passage. I can't go any further. The tomb is locked like a safe. At least I know I'm approaching my goal. He has work to do. I don't want to disturb him. Do you have a moment? Hold on. 
Go ahead. There is a symbol of a very unique cross-like shape in the chapel. Would you happen to know anything about it? Oh, I think I know what you mean. It's an old symbol of the nobleman of the manor. It's strange, though. I've never noticed it there myself. Eleanor has got the only remaining one in her jewelry box. I'd like to see it. Where exactly is that box? She tends to keep it nearby. It's probably somewhere in the main hall. The mansion will be closed for the night. Take my key from the table over there. Thanks. I'll leave you to your work then. The entrance is locked.
bottom part looks exactly like the opening in the grate of the underground tomb. This must be Durgan's tomb. The curtain of steam makes it impossible to estimate the distance to the bottom. The floor may have collapsed deeply. I'd better hold back. Use a stranger's head, or your own will shed. There's an opening on the top. There's an opening. This one has a crack on it. It looks a bit different than the other ones. can't have fallen any worse. I probably ran out of luck in the mines yesterday. Maybe I'll reach it now. That sound! What was that? Dagam Gordon. I did not have any reason to extend my stay in Wales. The next morning, I said goodbye to Eleanor and returned to Black Mirror. Samuel, you have returned sooner than I expected. 
How are things in Wales? Is Eleanor well? Yes, she's quite well. I gave her your letter. Thank you, Samuel. I can hear uncertainty in your voice. Has something gone wrong? I'm afraid it has, my dear. Bates, you tell Samuel. I do not want to speak about it myself. Yes, madam. First, about Sir Robert. He went away the night you left for Wales, sir. Just before he left, he told me he had to go to Ashbury on an urgent matter. I know. I spoke with him about it. Did something happen in the sanatorium? Unfortunately, sir, I do not know. Sir Robert did not return home that night. In fact, we have had no news of him since then. Maybe he had to stay there. He told me he had a lot of work. That is what we thought too. But the head nurse told us he left the gates of Ashbury just before midnight. Hmm, that's strange indeed. He would often stay at the sanatorium for several days in a row, but he would always let us know. We do not know what could have happened. Bates, do not speak like this. I'm sorry, madam. I did not mean it that way. We'll wait until this evening and then call the sanatorium. Maybe Robert will have returned by then. Bates, you started to say, first, about Sir Robert. Is there anything I should know? Yes, sir. I just don't know if I can speak about it in front of madam. Oh, go ahead, Bates. The thought is inevitable anyway. All right, then. Detective Collier showed up this morning. I thought he had come because of Henry's drowning, but I was mistaken. Someone from the village found a body of a boy in the woods. Collier came here to inform us only. This time he spared us his questions. A body of a boy? What happened to him? Detective Collier suggested that the boy had been killed by the wolves. Did he mention the place where it happened? No, I did not want to ask him about anything. Oh, I understand. Too much evil has come to us within the last two days. Do not know what is going on, Samuel. Now please excuse me. I do not want to talk about this any longer. Yes, I understand. I'll probably go to my room. I lit up your fireplace already this morning, sir. It's very cold today. Robert said something about a runaway patient before he left. Robert, and that boy. Indeed, some very strange things have been happening around here lately. Master Gordon, have you heard what happened? Yes, I have. Poor boy. And I was so mean to him. I hope someone kills that beast of a wolf real soon. I'll hang its stuffed coat above the door. You can count on that. How do you know it was a wolf? Well, what else could it be? It was a wolf, that's for sure. Maybe. There's no reason to talk. I need to talk to you. Go away. Have you heard what happened? Yeah, it's terrible. You know, I don't get distressed easily, but this boy, I feel sorry for him. They found him torn to pieces. Those damn beastly wolves. I'd like to see traps set all over the place and shoot whatever the traps don't take care of. Where did it happen? Close to the old mines, right around that bloody altar. Stonering? 
Yes, there. That place is haunted, that's for sure. It was once the sacred ritual place of the druid wizards. It's an evil place. Poor little Vic. Donoring. I used to play there as a child, too. I should go have a look around there. From Willow Creek, I set my steps towards the dark woods, at the edge of our manor. My thoughts were with the ritual place of the ancient druids, Stonering. Mr. Gordon, may I ask what you are doing here? Why have you come to this place? I heard what happened, and I wanted to see for myself. I don't like what's been happening at all. You don't mind, do you? No, it's all right, as long as you do not impede my investigation. Strange that we should meet again at a place where a tragedy has occurred, don't you think? No, I don't. I'm trying to understand what is going on here, just like you. This is police work, Mr. Gordon. Things have been getting more and more complicated recently, and I don't need more added confusion. No offense intended. None taken. I quite understand. Can you at least describe to me what happened? Oh well, since you've come this far, I suppose I should tell you what I know. But first, you tell me what you already know, so I'm not wasting my time. I only know that they found the body of a young boy here, and it appears that he was killed by wolves. Then you know almost all that I do. There is not much more I can add to that. The boy probably wandered too far from the village last night. Very imprudent. When the wolves attacked him, he was trying to escape. Unfortunately, the furious beasts got to the unlucky lad. You know the rest already. Don't you find it odd that the bloodstains are only on that big stone in the middle? I'd say the boy was trying to run to a higher place. But it was no help. That's all I'm willing to tell you. Gordon, I don't want you to speak about this with anyone else, you understand? People know way too much already, and I don't want to be adding to any scary, tall stories. I'll keep it to myself. Good. I need to reflect on a couple of matters now. Of course. Would you mind if I had a look around here? What makes you so interested in all this? You wouldn't happen to know anything I don't, would you? Well, I'm not quite sure. You would tell me if that were the case, right? Certainly. Very well then. Do whatever you want here. I have no reason to ask you to leave. Have you found out anything new about Henry's death? Yes, a new fact has come to light that has made things clearer to me. I was just about to close the case, but then I spoke with the pathologist. Dr. Herman? It seems that Mr. Stanton did not die by suffocation, or drowning for that matter. How did he die then? Herman has not been able to determine the exact cause yet. He has not arrived at a conclusive assessment yet, so I gave him some more time. What's certain though is that Stanton's lungs were not full of water, as is common with drowning. You see what this could mean if it were confirmed. Not quite, Detective. It would mean that he died somewhere else, and his body was carried and dumped into the fountain. Another murder, then? Doubtless, should Herman confirm his theory. I will not tell you anything else. You know more than necessary already. I would, however, like to ask you something. Just a routine, you see, Gordon? Yes, go ahead. I have only one question. Where were you? yesterday, at about this time. Well, if you must know, I was visiting my relatives at a remote manor in Wales. And what was the purpose of that visit? Well, just a family visit, nothing special. Why are you interested? Just a routine question, Gordon. And that's all for now. All right.
another symbol. I should make a drawing of it. I should make... Done. Strange. The plant that's clinging to it looks burnt. Detective. Yes? I have had a look around this place, and I've noticed something. You might be interested in this. Yes, I'm listening. There is a symbol of some sort over there on that big stone to the left. Yes, I've seen it. It could have been here for years, maybe even longer. Oh, I don't think so. Hmm, why do you say that? Well, the paint is very bright, and also, I have seen a similar symbol before. Really? Where? Not exactly like this one, but quite similar. In fact, I have seen two different symbols. The first one on the old tower of our castle, and I noticed another one on the fountain where Morris found Henry. Hmm, that's rather strange indeed. But you can remain calm, Gordon. I know from experience that often even the strangest things sometimes have little meaning. To me, those are just old signs. Who knows? Maybe they were used in the past to mark something that have long been forgotten. There might be dozens of them across the manor. Maybe. I doubt they have any connection with the case. I'm not so sure about that. That's all for now. All right. There are many such as these in the forest. A small piece of cloth is sticking from under the leaves. The detective probably doesn't know about it. I can't pick it up now. I've got to distract him somehow. One of the many stones around the altar. Perhaps they were once used to form a circle around the altar. This should keep the detective busy for a while. Detective? Yes? I found something that may interest you. There is a stain here on the stone behind you. I think it might be blood. Hmm. Where exactly is it? Right behind you, on the right. Oh, thanks for warning me. I didn't notice it at first. You're welcome. Here is my chance. I have to pick up the handkerchief while he is distracted elsewhere. The Gordon symbol is embroidered in the cotton. How could the handkerchief have gotten there? I should ring the bell. Yes? Samuel Gordon, I need... Yes, I am...
Mr. Gordon, to what do I owe your visit today? Good afternoon, Doctor. I have come to ask you about something. Oh? Would you believe that does not actually surprise me? In fact, I sensed that you would show up. You have come because of that poor boy, correct? Yes, mainly. So, what do you want to know? Tell me, when did you last see Robert? Hmm, some three days ago, I think. If you are looking for him, it is best to call the sanatorium. He is there constantly. No one has seen him in a while, and Victoria is becoming worried. I just wondered whether he had been here lately. Oh, he has not been here for quite some time. But then again, there is no purpose to his visit as far as I can tell. The last time I saw him was after William's funeral and not since. If you hear anything about him, please let us know. Certainly. Dr. Herman? Yes? Have you found out anything new regarding that strange thing you told me about? Do you mean Henry's body? No, I have not. I need much more time for that. I spoke with Collier about that boy. We were standing at the place where it happened. He didn't tell me much, other than the boy was killed by wolves. Yes, that was the original theory. The wounds were suggestive of an animal's assault. After a closer analysis, however, I can safely reject that possibility. So you have a different opinion? Yes, I have. The cause of death was severe blood loss and critical injuries of numerous organs. No animal living in these lands would be capable of doing this. Not injuries like these. What about an entire pack of wolves? The signs on the body are clear. No traces of sharp teeth bites, nothing like that. So do you have a possible explanation? I do not exactly know yet, but the boy was certainly not killed by wolves or any other animal. Of that, I'm positive. Morris, do you have a moment? Sure. Morris, what do you know about that dead boy they found in the woods? Me? I don't know anything about him. But I'll tell you this. Some pretty weird things have been happening around here lately. Some damn strange things indeed. I will go then. All right, sir. There's a letter in it. Maybe Bates forgot to pick it up. I'll take it. Dear Father, hopefully it will be your hands that my letter reaches first. I cannot endure staying locked away in this horrible place. Therefore, I have decided to do what I should have done a long time ago. I will explain everything when we meet at our place. I know that you will understand. 
James. Father, so James is William's son. Why didn't Victoria tell me when we spoke before? Bates? Yes, sir? I'd like to speak with Victoria. Do you know where she is? Madam has gone to her room to rest, sir. I do not think she wants to be disturbed. Oh, all right. I th I'll... May I speak with you for a while, Victoria? Of course, Samuel. Victoria, I found a letter in which James writes to William. He addresses him as Dear Father. So who is James, in fact? Oh, well, it does not matter anymore anyway. It is true, Samuel. James is William's illegitimate son. I could not tell you before when you showed me that picture. I didn't want anyone to know. This secret must be buried along with William. I understand. I'm concerned about Robert. I appreciate your concern. I spoke with the sanatorium's head nurse a few minutes ago. She had no news of him whatsoever. I'm worried, Samuel. Something strange is going on. I fear something may have happened to him. I'm sure Robert will manage. Do not underestimate this, Samuel. He is my oldest son, and then I have no one left but you. I'm quite sure nothing has happened to him. Everything will get sorted out soon. I hope you are right. I cannot wait in uncertainty any longer. We must do something. I would like you to go to Ashbury to find out what happened. Here we wait in darkness, and I have no one else that can go. Will you do it for me, Samuel? Of course. I'll set off straight away. No, please do not go in the middle of the night. It will be better to go in the morning. I don't mind traveling at night, and it is best that I go as soon as possible. Are you certain? The sooner I find out something, the better. All right, then. But please take care of yourself, will you, Samuel? You needn't worry. I must go to Ashbury and figure out what happened. Would you please... I set off for Ashbury to find out why Robert hadn't returned yet. Someone has to know something about him there. The Ashbury Sanatorium. The place of laments, as William used to call it. I know this is an awkward hour, but can you let me in? I would like to visit one of the patients. We do not allow anyone in at this time, I'm sorry. You will have to come during regular visiting hours. Tomorrow will be too late. Please, let me in and I'll explain everything. Oh, are you a doctor? No, I'm not. Who have you come to visit then, in the middle of the night? I've come because of Robert Gordon. He is the director here. Yes, I happen to know who's director here, Mr... Samuel Gordon. I I'm sorry, I forgot to introduce myself. Very well, then. 
I'll make an exception, Mr. Gordon. Push the gate open when you hear the buzzer and go straight to the main entrance. I will be expecting you in the lobby. Thank you. Thank you for letting me in. Well, I would not have let you in if you weren't a relative of the head doctor. Yes. Actually, he is what I'm here about. You see, he hasn't shown up for a couple of days now, and I was hoping you might know something. I'm afraid I will have to disappoint you then. He left the sanatorium the day before yesterday, late at night, and has not turned up again since. Are you sure? Of course. I have been on duty every day. What time did he leave? Around midnight, I believe. He always leaves quite late. He has had a lot of work to do lately. Did he mention where he was going, or say anything unusual? Hmm. Give me a minute. No, no, I don't recall him saying anything special. In fact, he was very tired. Just said goodnight and left. I would like to visit a patient named James. Can you show me to his cell? No, that's not possible, Mr. Gordon. Can't you let me in? Unfortunately, you will not be able to visit him, no matter what I could or could not do. I don't understand. Don't you know? James escaped the night before yesterday. I thought someone had told you. No, I didn't know. How did he escape? He must have gotten into the sewer system under the building. It should have occurred to me that he might do something like this. Why? Did he say something to you? Yes, I spoke to him the day before. He seemed much more anxious than usual. But there was more to it. I don't know if I can tell you. It is a delicate situation. Please speak. It might be important. Maybe it will shed some light on the whole matter with Robert. Do you think it may be related? I don't have a clue. Please tell me what you know. All right. James was more anxious than usual, as I said. It was hard to understand what he was trying to tell me. But it was the head doctor that he was speaking about. He said he knew something important, but he could not tell anyone what it was. Did he say what it was exactly? No. It seemed to me that he was afraid to talk. He kept asking me to put in a word for him with one of the doctors so he could go home. But he insisted that I not mention it to the head doctor. He acted quite desperate, so I promised I would help him. What happened then? Well, James does tend to be very moody, but I would not say that he is dangerous. I have known him for years now, and most of the time he has made very little trouble. So I went to the head doctor to ask him for a temporary leave permit for James. But you said he didn't want Robert to know. I had to promise that, but without the signature of the head doctor, no patient can leave this place. He didn't agree, though, and defended his opinion quite firmly. It seemed rather strange to me. Such rigidity, I mean. Did you speak with James after that? No, I didn't want to further disconcert him. And the next day, he escaped. I cannot tell you anything more. I have no idea why he wanted to go back home so suddenly. You have been quite helpful. Thank you. Why would James want to get away so desperately and suddenly? And why didn't Robert allow him to return to the castle? It seems to me that these things are related somehow. That's all. Terrible weather. A sewer. Maybe the main output of the ventilation system of the building. A few beer bottles, old containers and rusty cans. Just rubbish. A syringe. 
looks quite clean. Who the hell is that? Nurse, is that you again? I'm heating the place like I'm supposed to. Not one of those crackpots of yours is freezing. Don't you worry. The boiler is running full blast, so leave me alone. This is Samuel Gordon. Can you open the door? Who? I'd just like to ask you about something. Yeah? What do you want from me? My Uncle Robert runs this institution. Can you let me in? I couldn't care less about who's running this booby etch. I don't belong to the doctor bunch, and I don't have to obey old Gordon. Give me a break, and mind your own business. All right, but I just need to find something out. Then I'll be gone. Oh well, okay, what do you want? It seems to be quite hot inside. Are you heating at full power? There's no other way when the weather's like this. I'll sit here the whole day and night in this awful heat. Well, you can turn it down a little, can't you? Impossible. They've just installed this new regulator. It takes care of maintaining the right temperature by itself. If it could also do the shoveling for me, I'd have one less thing to worry about. So why don't you just leave the door open? Well, that's another problem. I don't want the nurse checking up on me. She comes by to have a peek inside here from time to time to see whether I'm asleep or something. When the door is closed, I can cool myself down with beer whenever I want. I see. Have you seen Dr. Gordon recently? No, I haven't. I'm closed. Nobody ever comes around here anyway, except the head nurse. I last saw him about a month or so ago. Yeah, last month. It was Thursday, I think. No, not after that. But you said you were his nephew, didn't you? So? Well, then it's you who should know where he is. What do you know about the runaway patient? There was a lot of confusion about his escape here. Having a clue why they made so much fuss over one silly loony. That loony is a member of my family. He may be disturbed, but he's no fool. Oh, I'm sorry. How could I know that you were related? Now, why I asked. You know this place well, right? Sure. I've worked here for some years now. If you wanted to get outside, how would you do it? Listen, these are some odd questions, you know. Aren't you an inspector or something like that? You think inspections are carried out at midnight? So how does one escape out of a locked cell? Well, I have no idea why you're interested in this. But I don't think there's a simple way out. Maybe from the hall, into the sewers under the building. Other than that, I don't know. If you manage to get that far, the rest wouldn't be a problem. The sewer has several openings that nobody's watching. Why are you asking anyway? I'm just considering all the alternatives. Right. I have to see the cell from the inside. If it's impossible to get out, as everyone says, how could James have escaped without someone having helped him? But who could have helped him? That nurse, maybe. Or Robert himself. Robert's disappearance is surely connected with James somehow. I won't be keeping you any longer. Good. A few bottles of beer. The labels are not very damp. The bottles haven't been out long. Everyone who died within the walls of the sanatorium rests here. A gloomy place.
the resting place of someone of a noble family. It hides a few flickering candles from the rain. The metal doors have no locks to prevent just anyone from entering. This is the way to the patient's cells. No one is allowed to go there at night. May I speak with you? Sure. Can you tell me anything about the sanatorium graveyard? I have worked here for almost 12 years now, and I know next to nothing about it. Has it always belonged to the sanatorium? As far as I know, it has. We no longer use it for burying, but it would have served its purpose in the past. Many patients would spend their whole life here, and when their time came, they would be buried at the back of the sanatorium. But that was a long time before I started here. I do not know much else about that place. That's all. The nurse won't let me go to the cells this late at night. I've got to find another way inside. We have said everything to each other all... I need a little time here without being watched. Could you possibly do me a favor? I'd like to make a call to the manor to check if anything has changed regarding Robert. If you could show me where the phone is... I'm sorry, I can't let you inside. But I could call myself. Right. Here's the number then. I do not need it. It is in the internal phone book. Wait here. All right. I need to do this quickly before she returns. The cabinet is locked. It has a slot of some kind at the bottom. I can't leave. There are some. The coin fits in the groove at the bottom. A little key was hidden there. The label does... A strong sedative will put a person to sleep for a whole day. Bethanol. Hmm. I have no idea what it's good for. Maybe a relaxant, who knows? Cantropin diminishes headaches. I still have enough of my own pills.
It took a while. No one was answering the phone this late. No problem. Did you learn anything about Robert? Unfortunately, Mr. Gordon has not returned yet. I see. Thank you for your time. You are quite welcome. It was nothing. That's all. Thanks. I spilt a little, but the syringe is full of sedative now. I'll go with full dose, so it kicks in fast. Now, get him to drink it. I'll have a look. This must be the thermostat regulating the temperature of the ventilation. Hmm. I can't see any controls on it. The middle rod seems to be loose. Maybe I could pull it out somehow. It's probably entirely automatic. It won't move. I have to loosen the brick that's holding it. It should be possible to confuse the sensor of the thermostat with cold water. The temperature inside will rise noticeably for a while. I've got to wait a little until the sedative kicks in. I've got to wait a little. I've got I I I I I've got to wait a little. Doesn't make much noise. I could wake him up. There's an intercom system installed in the building.
Lots of old leaflets, posters, and newspaper pages. Work schedule of that sooty bully. He's off duty for a while now. An old oil lamp and an empty bottle of cheap whiskey. Nothing useful. I wonder what door it opens. I'll take it. It's certainly going to be useful. Nothing. It's not connected. That's it. That was close. He almost noticed me. I have to lure him out of that hole somehow. There is no other way to reach James's cell. May I speak with you? Sure. Something just occurred to me. Can you possibly lend me the main duty schedule of all the employees? Do not think anyone will mind if you have a look at it. Although I have no idea how it's going to help you. Who knows? Maybe something will reveal itself. All right. Here it is. Thank you. I'll return it when I've read it. That won't be necessary. It is already the end of the week. I must issue a new one anyway. That's all. Thanks. Dr. Smith, please come to the lobby. What could they possibly want from me this late? Damn, I guess I must go. Who is there? Who is th there? I have to say something before he gives me away. I am Samuel. I uh, am Ralph. We can't speak for too long, okay, Ralph? I do know one Samuel, but not quite, though. Why can't we t talk, Samuel? Well... We can, but we have to speak quietly, or better yet, whisper. All right. Speak quietly, Samuel. I need to know something. Will you help me? I... The n nurse says I'm g good, but n now I'm very sad. I w will help you when I'm not sad, okay? And why are you sad? Well, because of... Bubby. Who is Bubby? Did he do something to you? N no! Mr. Bubby is very kind. He is my friend. But now he's gone, and I d don't know where. P 
Perhaps I'll lead him angry somehow. And what does he look like, this Mr. Bobby? Maybe I can help you find him. He, he, he's no animal. He's very clever and t talks to me often. And what does he look like? Mm, he, he's not tall like us. He, he's sh short, but very handsome. Oh, okay. If I find him for you, will you help me? Yes, yes. I hope you didn't get lost. You'll be searching hard, won't you, Samuel? Don't be afraid. I'll find him. It's probably a toy. Where could he have lost it? Just garbage. Trash. I can't see anything but garbage in it. I can't... just... It's empty. Trash. Let's see. There's something in it. The head of a doll. There's something buried between the coal fragments. The pin served almost as well as a needle would. Ralph's Bobby is complete now. Ralph? Can you hear me? Y yes, Samuel, I can hear you, but I am still very sad. Poor Mr. Booby. It's no use. He w Ralph, Mr. Bobby is fine again. Here he is. Oh, that's very good. I'm glad he's here with me again. M Mr. Booby says he is glad too. Thank you, Samuel. You have been very kind to us. I must speak with Mr. Booby now. I haven't seen him for so long. Hold on, Ralph. You promised to help me if I can find Mr. Bobby for you. But n now I want to be alone with Mr. Booby f for a while. Ralph, Mr. Bobby is sad that you don't want to help me. Ask him. <laughs> yes, Mr. Bobby says that, that he will help you too. Me and Mr. Bobby too. Ralph, do you know someone called James? James is my friend too. He and Mr. Bobby. I need to know which room he lives in. He, he lives next to me, 
right next door. But James isn't home now. I know. Have you noticed where they put the key to his door? Is it somewhere nearby? Perhaps in some cabinet? No, it's not. Dr. Smith, who guards us, has got all the keys. Do you know that for sure? Yes. When we go to the corridor, he opens the door for all of us. But I don't think he's going to lend the key to you. He's very hard. Oh, never mind. Drat! Smith is returning. We had better not speak any longer. Maybe later. Maybe later. Okay, Samuel. So, the doctor has the keys. How do I get them? The fencing is very strong. I can't do anything with it with bare hands. I've got an idea. I just need to flip the switch. No one will notice. I've got to attract attention somehow. I must hide. Hey, what is going on over there? <laughs> he fell. He fell. Did you see it, Mr. Bobby? He <laughs> he. I hope I haven't hurt him. I think he's going to be all right. The keys to all the cells. Awful place. A normal person would not survive a single month in here. I should examine the cell before someone catches me. One of the strange drawings of James's mind. One of the strange drawings of James's mind. This drawing is crumpled, as if someone threw it away and then put it back on the wall. I'll try to remove it. Ralph, can you hear me? Yes, Samuel, I can hear you. Good. Can we talk now? You found Mr. Bobby for me, so you're my friend now. I like friends a lot. Do you know that? Uh, yes. So, what was it that you wanted to talk to us about, Samuel? You said you are scared of the head doctor. Yes, very. He, he's not a good man, Samuel. Why are you afraid of him? He often shouts at us, and he's very strict. B but I'm mostly afraid of him at night. He sometimes goes around to our rooms, and the, 
Then something happens to somebody. Tell me more. Once at night, he also came to, to me, gave me some m medicine, and after that, I was b very sick. He s said he would give me more if I told anyone. Y you will not tell him that I t told you, will you, Samuel? I won't tell him anything. I don't know if I could bear more medicine. When did you last see the head doctor? I th think it was that time he was shouting at James. I didn't see him the next night, and I didn't see him today I I either. I hope he will be gone for a long time. Why would Robert administer medicine secretly at night? He must be hiding something. Tell me about James. Do you know why he ran away? I think he, he no longer liked it here. And also, he was scared a lot. What was he afraid of? I can tell you. You, you won't tell anybody, will you? I won't, Ralph. He was afraid of the head doctor. I too am afraid afraid of Mr. Head Doctor, but James was really scared. Why was he afraid of him? He... He came once to... to James in the m middle of the night, and they were talking for a long t time. I was listening th through this hall. Mr. Head Doctor was shouting at James, a lot. Did you hear what they were talking about? Maybe. I don't know. You must have heard something. Only a couple words, really. Just a couple. Something about a William somebody and a c castle. I can't remember any more. I was scared. Okay, Ralph. Robert was probably quarreling with James about his possible return to the castle. But why didn't Robert want to let him go home? A couple of pencils and some blank sheets of paper. Nothing interesting. piece of paper is sticking out. I'll try to pull it out. February 25th. William must know that I will be all right. All right. But there is nothing, wrong, there is with nothing wrong with me anymore. Just the voices. I don't understand them. I wish they would leave me alone. They won't get out of my head, not even when I beg them. I paint a lot in the evening. It helps to drown out their whispering. The strokes of my paintbrush connect into a coherent image in the end without my thinking about it at all. It's as if someone leads my hand. February 27th. I must see William somehow before I get absorbed into this place completely. When we meet, I will tell him everything. William must learn of the evil things Robert is doing to us here. I have to find a way to let him know, to get my note somehow to the usual place. But what if my letter is found by Robert? I must be very careful. Luckily, it never occurs to him to have a look in there, not even when he's passing by. March 2nd. Robert didn't show up at all today. Ralph didn't see him either. That's good. That's very good. 
I hope he'll stay away wherever he is. March 8th. It's been ten days already since I sent my letter by the old warden. Why hasn't William done anything yet? I wonder if he received my letter. I don't know how long I will be able to endure this place. All right! Got you! I knew there was someone behind the escape. Do you hear me? I'll be back in a minute, and then you will have things to explain. The doctor has likely come too. I've got to get out of here before he brings someone. I don't really feel like explaining why I stunned him. Ralph, can you hear me? Yes, Sample. I can hear you. Ralph, when James was planning to escape, did he speak to you about it? Yes, Sample. Did he mention how he would do it? Yes, he did. Will you tell me? But I can't. That I c can't do. I promised James. I wouldn't tell that to anyone. Ralph, James is my good friend too. Do you understand me? I know he would tell me himself, if he were here. I... all right. I think I can t tell you. Mr. Booby says it's okay too. James has got a hole under his bed. Yes, a hole. Under his bed, you say? Yes, y yes, surely. You promise that that you won't tell anyone. Don't be afraid, Ralph. Mr. B Bobby trusts you, Samuel, and so do I. I go speak with Mr. Bobby now. He seems so sad to me. I should leave before someone sees me. I'll return later when things have settled down. I'd better leave now. Do you need anything, sir? I would like to ask you about... Certainly. Can you tell me where the old lighthouse is on our lands? I do not recall having heard about it. But certainly you do, sir. The decaying ruins are along the sharp edge cliffs. It is the only building in that wasteland. You cannot possibly miss it. May I ask why you are interested in it? Well, I really just wanted to know where I would find it. I think I'll read. I didn't know whether I'd find James on the cliffs. Something was telling me, though, that it was the place where he wanted to meet with William. This place looks exactly like that picture of James's. There's nothing interesting on those. Someone started a fire inside. If it's really James in there, I should be ready for just about anything. First, I'll have a look around. 
Maybe I should have a look around the lighthouse before I go find out who's inside. Melody, I know it. Yes, you know it. Try to remember, James. I... I heard it so many times. When I was a little boy. Trust me, I'm telling you the truth. I am Samuel. William was my friend, just as he was yours. Samuel? I don't remember the name. It's all so distant now. William raised you as a son. I just wanted to go back home. I... I sent a letter to William, but he neither replied nor came to see me. He could not come, James. It was I who found your note, and that is why I've come. Why couldn't he come? Is he ill? He... William is dead. No, I don't believe you. You're lying. He will come for me and take me home. You have to trust me, James. William died a few days ago. They found his body under the old tower. Everyone believes it was an accident, but I don't believe it. I've come to you because you can help me find the truth. Me? There's no way I could be of help. I don't believe in truth anymore. But you know something that can help me find it. You must help me. I don't even know who you are. What if you're lying to me? What if you have come to take me back? I'm your only friend now, James. If you tell me what you know, I will help you return home. Why should I trust you? Well. You don't have much of a choice. Maybe you really are my only friend. And if you're lying, it doesn't really matter anyway. I will never return there. I'd sooner kill myself than be with those people again. You won't have to if you help me. All right. I'll tell you everything you want. I want you to take a look at this. I know William left a similar object in your care a long time ago. I would like to get it back. Gave it to me as a present when I was a little boy. I had long forgotten about it. William said I must take special care of it and not tell anyone. And he was very serious about it. So where is it now? Have you got it with you? No. They would have found it and taken it from me. I hid it in a safe place, right in front of everybody's noses. It wouldn't occur to anyone to even start looking there. Where? Where did you hide it? I don't know if I should tell you. William... William is dead. I must find that thing. You can't possibly imagine what I had to go through to get a hold of the other ones. All right. I will tell you. It's in the old sewers, deep under the castle. But there are no sewers there. Do you mean the cellar? There is such a place, right under the cellar. You can get there through one of the trains. Is that where I will find it? Yes. Robert left for Ashbury two days ago. 
He said he had to leave because of something serious. No one has seen him since then. Neither at the castle, nor at the sanatorium. Good! Maybe he finally got what he deserved. Maybe somebody finally killed him for all his atrocities. I certainly won't miss him. Atrocities? All those secret experiments of his on the patients. Is obsessed with the idea that he's going to make a huge discovery and won't stop no matter what happens. Him who's mad. What exactly did he do? He injected all kinds of stuff into us. Some of us died. Everyone in those cells is a guinea pig to him. Why has no one ever found out? He gets away with whatever he wants. No one has ever found out. When I told him I wanted to return, he gave me a shot. And after that, I didn't have a clue what was happening for two whole days. He knows very well that I could tell and ruin everything. I didn't want another dose of that stuff, so I ran away. James, I know you used to live at the castle. Why did William leave you in Ashbury? It wasn't William. It was Robert who let me grow old in that horrible place. He put me there against William's will. He told him that I'd be better off, that I'd only stay there for a few weeks, that it would help me. But you never returned. He convinced William that I was getting worse and that he had to treat me for another month or two. William believed the lies and put me in Robert's care. I still have no idea why he did that to me. How could he possibly allow such a thing? So, Robert was lying to him all that time. If it hadn't been for him, I could have returned any time. Now, everything's changed. I am here, and nobody, not even Robert, is going to get me back. I hate that bastard. I have to leave now, James. Okay, I'll hide again. might come in handy. Unpleasant smell is coming out of it. Nothing. No water. James did not lie. The secret underground exits. The air is barely breathable. What good would a fountain be in a cellar? Perhaps it would bring up the water from the well when the castle was besieged. The water here couldn't be drank as it is, though. It's like a swamp here.
This mechanism probably controls the pumps in the cellar. Surely it hasn't been here since the old days. It appears to be stuck. It appears to... It appears to be stuck. The air smells awful like a swamp. Fresh air hasn't made it down here in centuries. An opening of some sort. Perhaps something is missing here. I can't move it at all. The bars are chained and padlocked. I think that this is where the water comes in. The hatch is closed, though. A part of some mechanism. There is so much algae in the water, the cogwheel hasn't even sunk. How can I get it out? I'll tie the hook to the rope. This won't do. The rope is bending too much. It's rusty from the dampness. One of the rods is loose. I'll try to stick the rod in there. I can't do it. The rod is too thick. I'll try to sharpen the rod a bit. That should be enough. This should do better. Okay, I put the rod in the opening. I'll use the rod as a lever. Hmm, the hatch has opened, but no water is running. Richard's acid has dissolved the padlock as if it were made of paper. The water has risen to the brim of the drain channel. It's still too far. An old rod. It will have to do.
It works. The mechanism is running. The water has drained into the underground system of channels. The way is free. The water is gone, but its stink has remained. No one has set foot down here in ages. This place is so cold, and the silence is eerie. My every step echoes all around. This must be James's chest. I have found it at last. He had probably hidden it somewhere before the room was filled with water. Another key. James didn't lie. Strange symbols in a circle. Hmm. The underground certainly had a different purpose in the past than just to keep the water away. Ah! My head. I'd better take my medication. I'm sick from this bad air. I'll rest a couple of hours and return later. These horrid dreams feel like deja vu. Why am I dreaming such awful things? Just two days ago, my gloomy morning thoughts were interrupted by Bates' knock at the door. Sir! Sir, open up! I must speak to you! Hold on, Bates. I'm there in a moment. What is it, Bates? They just called from Ashbury regarding a very serious matter. I think it is necessary that you go there as soon as possible, sir. Why? What exactly did they say? I spoke with the head nurse. She did not want to tell me what has happened. I am very concerned. Maybe some news of Sir Robert. Did she tell you anything more? She did not want to tell me anything specific, sir. Did you speak with Victoria about it? No, sir. I didn't want to disturb her. Hopefully nothing much has happened, but it would be good to know for sure. All right. I'll pay them a visit. In the meantime, keep this whole thing to yourself. Of course. And, sir, the weather is truly terrible. A vigorous storm is approaching. The sky is entirely overcast as though it were night. I have no previous recollection of such horrid weather. It is very strange indeed. Going to be a strong thunderstorm, that's all. But thank you for the warning. On the way to Ashbury, Bates's words resonated in my mind. Only the dark silhouette of the Ashbury Sanatorium quieted them. I wonder what news of Robert I will learn.
It's Samuel Gordon. Can you let me in? Just one moment, Mr. Gordon. Mr. Gordon, I have terrible news for you. The head doctor is dead. Robert? What are you talking about? An officer and a detective were here. It's awful. How did it happen? They said they found his body at the old lighthouse. James was sitting right next to the body. James? He was just sitting there, gazing. He didn't even try to escape, just kept crooning some melody. I never thought that he would be able to kill someone. Where is James now? Where did they take him? Where he belongs, back in his old cell. It's going to be his home for life. So, Robert is dead. But if James had killed him, why didn't he run away? I'd like to visit James. Can you let me into the main hall, to his cell? How do you know where his cell is? Hmm? Well, Robert was in charge of this sanatorium, you remember? He told me where I'd find James. Sorry, I did not realize that. All right then, I will let you in. But after what has happened, I cannot let you go in there alone. I will have to go with you. No problem. We can go then. You know the way, as you are so well informed. I'll be right behind you. Oh, not this. Wait here. I must fetch a doctor. What happened? James, what he feared most has happened. He couldn't return to this place. James wrote my name on the wall. Why did he do it? At least he died quickly. I recognize that tag. Robert's keys. I'll try to get the plaster off. Damn, the blade cracked. Ralph, can you hear me? Yes, I, I can, Samuel. Uh, have you come to visit me? Or have you come to visit James? James? James is no longer here, Ralph. Why are you saying that? James is here with me. He's always here with, with me. I can hear his voice. He wouldn't leave me alone here. I need to ask you about something that concerns James. Yes. Me and Mr. Bubby will help you. Ralph, when did you last speak with James? Do you remember? Yes, Samuel. What did he say? Did he talk about why he escaped? M maybe, but he was so terrified and was saying such a lot. He was very confused by it all. He kept s saying that he hadn't killed him. That's what he was saying. Robert? Y yes, him. What else did he say? He said he knew who killed him. That he knew. The name. Can you remember the name of the person he was talking about? No, no. I was confused. He also t told me he's saying goodbye and that we would not see each other again. He didn't want to be put in his room again. Ralph, please, try to remember who James was speaking about. I don't know. I really don't. He wouldn't speak then, and th there was a long silence. I don't like such silence. 
All right, Ralph. I have to leave now. Okay, Samuel. Mr. Bubby says, okay. Ralph was the last one to speak to James, but I probably won't be able to get much more out of him. What are you doing here? Get out immediately! You have no business being in here! I set off for the old lighthouse on the sharp edge cliffs. The only possible place where I can find out something about Robert's death. So here's where they found Robert's body. It's too dark. I can't see anything in there. Another symbol. I should make a picture of this one too. Done. There's nothing more to be found out here. I'll go to the morgue. Herman may know something new. I should ring the bell. He probably didn't hear the bell. I'll try again. He isn't answering. Strange. I thought he'd be at home. It's open. I'll have a look around. Where could Herman be? He left the door open and the morgue too. Strange. What could have happened here? That expression in his eyes were awful. The fifth symbol. Got it. Who could have killed him? And why? He's clasping something in his hand. The fingers have stiffened and cannot be opened in their post-mortem spasm. He's clasping the thing. I'll turn on the lamp. It's quite dark in here. Thank you. 
The forceps should do the trick. That must be the hair of the murderer. I have to put it into something. There are a few plastic bags under the book. I'll take them. There is nothing in them. The murderer has black hair. Hmm. James's hair was black as coal. I should go back to the sanatorium and obtain a sample for comparison. Someone's ringing the doorbell. I'd better leave quickly. Detective? Mr. Gordon? What are you doing here? I've come to see Dr. Herman and... Uh, I know what it probably looks like, but I'll explain everything. What are you talking about, Gordon? I don't know how to say this. I found Herman downstairs. He's dead. What? I went downstairs and found his body on the table. That is a serious matter. Are you sure? I know what I have seen, Detective. His body is lying on the autopsy table. The head off. With the head off? I must go there right away. Listen, Gordon, when you found him, were you alone? Was no one else with you? No one. Strange how coincidence tends to lead you to a corpse. He was already dead when I came around. I believe you. I know who is behind all of this. Really? Who? That lunatic who escaped from Ashbury a few days ago. Who else? Who else could possibly have committed such things? You remember that boy, and now Herman. Disfigured. A normal person cannot have done that. That's certainly true, but he hung himself in his cell. I was in the sanatorium today. So, the murderers punished himself. Hmm. Oh well. It's justice, I say. But you haven't got any evidence. Gordon, there are several disfigured corpses and a madman was on the loose. You want more evidence? Hmm, no thanks. Good that you told me about him, Gordon. Now please leave. I've got to go downstairs and deal with this. Goodbye. Goodbye, Detective. Why would James want to kill Herman? He didn't even know him. I've got to get a hold of a sample of James's hair somehow and compare it with the chunk that Herman was clasping in his hand in his post-mortem spasm. Who is... May I speak with you? Sure. Listen, I need to know something. Where is James's body? Excuse me? Don't ask. Just tell me where it is. Well, all right, if you must know. We cannot get hold of Dr. Herman. I don't know what is going on. So we placed the body in the old chapel in the graveyard until he arrives. It cannot stay much longer, though. It has to go to the morgue. That's all. Thanks.
Mind your own business. I've got no time for you. The chapel is locked. I haven't got time. Can you tell me, why is that chapel in the graveyard locked? The old chapel? I'll tell you why. It's locked because nobody has any business going in it. Can you open it for me? No, I couldn't. Nobody is allowed to go there, like I said. But you have the key to it, right? Exactly. And it's going to stay that way. I have to get into that chapel at all costs. How could I possibly obtain the key? How about you lend me your key? I'll return it in a little while. You could watch my wallet for me in the meantime. Hmm. Well, a little extra added to that lousy salary of mine would come handy. So, what do you say? Hmm. No, it's not possible. I can't do it. The head nurse would really enjoy the chance to fry my backside. I can't risk somebody finding out. Too bad. I'll keep the wallet to myself then. I won't be keeping you any good. I must be quiet so I won't get caught. This time, I wouldn't have any explanation. I'm lucky there's no one here. I've got to take advantage of that before somebody comes. How do I obtain the keys to that chapel? I'll have a look around here. I've got to come up with something. Too bad. No spare keys, just an old pair of rubber boots. Personal stuff. I'll leave it as it is. I should dampen it first. This should attract some attention. Now, I've got to get going.
Maybe I went a bit too far with those boots. Hopefully none of the smoke has gotten into the building. Perfect. He left the keys in the lock. I'll borrow them. James's body. I need a little hair for comparison with the sample that Herman was clasping in his hand. A broken glass. This should do. Where could I have a close look at it? Hmm. Well, maybe just. I'll go back to the moor and use Herman's microscope. It's set up properly now. I can use it. It's set up... The samples differ. Even I can see that. It wasn't James who killed Herman. But who was it then? Who's got a black? Morris. Morris isn't here. Where could he have gone? A letter. Strange things have been happening around here. It all began a few days after the funeral of old Mr. Gordon, when his Mr. heir Samuel Gordon. returned to then the manor. Then his heir Samuel returned to the manor. I haven't got a clue as to what's going on, but when somebody finds this note, I'll be far away already. It seems to me that that detective wants to frame me for Henry's murder, so I won't be hanging around. I'm going to go while there's still time. Feel free to keep my last month's wage, and don't bother looking for me. I won't be returning. Morris. Morris has run away. I knew he couldn't be trusted. What if it was he who committed the murders? Morris's cap. I found a little hair. I should examine it closely. Maybe this sample will match the one Herman was clasping in his hand. I found a maybe.
it's set up pro No, Morris isn't the murderer I'm looking for either. But if it isn't him, then who? Bates? Yes, sir? Bates, I have just returned from Ashbury. I spoke with the head nurse, and... Any news of Sir Robert? Well, unfortunately. From your tone, I anticipate bad news? It's... it's worse, Bates. Much worse. Robert is dead. What? Sir Robert? That's inconceivable. Oh my, I sensed something terrible would happen. All this time since Sir Robert disappeared, this is going to be a tremendous shock for Madam. Maybe it would be preferable not to let her know, at least for the time being. But how could we possibly not tell her about this? Bates, we cannot tell her now. Try to understand. We need to give this some time. But Madam will continue to look for Sir Robert. She will find out the truth by herself soon anyway, and things will be worse for her. Believe me, Bates. The later she learns about Robert's death, the better. Oh, you are probably right, sir. We have to give Madam more time. The news would destroy her right now. Would you excuse me now, sir? I need to organize my thoughts. I think I will go. I'll return. It's locked. Robert's study. I feel as though he were watching me even now. Another key. Who's the man in the picture? I've never seen his face before. I have to find his place in the past and obtain his key. A little key was hidden there. It looks like a security code. There's nothing else there, just papers and a book. A code of some sort. Strange, there's no writing on it. It can't be opened. Sophie, Robert's wife. She left him many years ago. It 
shed to... Six, three, zero, eight, one. That is a year prior to building the foundation of the castle. Exactly 12? It probably doesn't work. Secret bookcase. Robot had more secrets than anyone would have suspected. This is the right combination. It must be very old. I, William Gordon, have decided to bequeath my possessions as follows. To my dear Victoria, I give and will all my personal possessions, the family jewels and valuables, as they righteously belong to her, to her heirs and assigns forever. To my grandson, Samuel Gordon, I hereby transfer the ownership of the Black Mirror Castle with all the neighboring lands. To him, I also devise the administration of our family residence. Let him take care of it properly, as I no longer can. To his heir and assigns forever. To my beloved son James, I give the full right to live in his native residence for however long he should desire, until the end of his days. 
By this I hope to at least partially atone for your having to live in complete loneliness, my dear James. And lastly, to my firstborn son, Robert. After long pondering, I have decided to deny the right to the property of our family. However, I do retain his right to his property and things that he has been making use of in our family residence. I know that you are well aware of the reason of my decision, Robert. In my eyes, you are no longer worthy of the name Gordon. These decisions I make of my own free will, and in the best of conscience, William Gordon. William's last will was apparently meant to stay hidden from everyone. Robert, I see now I didn't know you at all, you bloody beast. Dear Samuel, it was not easy for me to find fitting words for these first lines that I hope you are reading. As well as it was not easy to find out where you were living. I hope that my letter will reach your hands as soon as possible, as there is not much time left. Since your departure, I have contributed all my efforts and endless hours of sleepless nights looking for the truth about our family. I feel that I am already very close to beholding its full face, and I am concerned that I might not have the strength to look at it alone. Therefore I am turning to you, Samuel. For I know that you will hear out my plea. In this envelope, you will find the ancient ring of our heritage. It is very important that you always have it with you. Take extraordinary care of it. I will explain everything when you arrive. Please return to our manor and help me. I know my time is closing in. I can feel it. I am afraid. William knew something, but now there's no way to find out what. Maybe I could have helped him if I had received the letter on time. I hope you're frying in hell. Can you hear me, Robert? Robert's Diary. May 2nd. Tomorrow I will visit Dr. Herman in the morgue. If he understands what I wrote to him in my letters, it shouldn't be too hard to convince him. I think he's my man. May 3. The visit to Herman fulfilled my expectations. Our secret agreement will make further progress in my research much easier. It did not take much effort to convince him to cooperate, just as I expected. Herman understands that science and research of novel concepts sometimes demands sacrifices. He agreed to take care of the first delivery tomorrow already, which suits my plans perfectly. If it were not for him, I do not know how it would be possible for me to keep on disposing of those damn bodies. A few corpses disappear without a trace certainly will not be a problem for him as a pathologist. Last, I can resume work on the tests. May 8th. Previous tests were no use, and several months of work turned out completely futile. God's sake, where could I have made a mistake? Where? Calculated all the components almost a thousand times and just haven't a clue as to what could be wrong. It's starting to make me tired. It's taking much too long. And with every new day, I'm afraid that someone will find out. It is with great luck that I convinced Herman to cooperate at the right moment. Either I improve the composition of the substance or raise doses as they are. Otherwise, I cannot proceed further. Yes, that's it. The composition is correct. I merely require to raise the dosage. Yes, should have started sooner with them. Oh, I will raise the concentration by a hundred percent. May 9, administered the higher concentrate to two subjects. I have to wait several days before I can make accurate measurements. At least I can now take a rest from all the figures and calculations. May 12. I thought I would not have to take any notes for the next few days, but I had a word with James today. He was acting differently than usual, and spoke about things that must never come to light. 
He knows too much about the methods of my research and can expose me. And worse, they would believe him. Do not know what to do now. Locked in that cell of his, he's trying to corner me. How ironic. Never before have I considered direct violence. But he is a threat to all my efforts and everything that I have achieved. May 13. Things are apparently worse than I thought. The head nurse spoke to James, and she herself suggested to me that we should release him for some time. It was quite an effort to convince her that James must stay where he is because of his condition. I have no clue what he told her to make her believe him, but I'm afraid he may tell her everything next time. Must not happen. He is not the fool I thought he was. I have to get rid of him somehow. May 15. Everything I once held firm in my hands is beginning to crumble and fall like a house of cards. Iodoses have had no effect. I verified all the measurements twice. Do not know how to continue. The whole affair with James refuses resolution. He must never be allowed to return to Black Mirror. Do what has to be done. There is only one possibility left. Only one solution. I will dispense with the calculations and raise the ratio of the effective substance by another hundred percent. I know whose veins I will inject the serum into this time. Herman helped Robert hide the results of his experiments. The bodies of the patients would end up in his morgue and no one was to find out. More tubes with that smelly solution. I have no clue what's in them. A chemical of some sort, that's for sure. There are dates on the labels, month after month. May I speak with you for a while, Victoria? Of course, Samuel. What was in the Ashbury building before it became a sanatorium? I have no idea. I was never interested in that place. Why are you asking about such a thing, Samuel? I just wanted to know. It's not important. I think on one occasion, Robert mentioned there used to be a hospital for cholera patients there. That building has a terrible past indeed. Victoria, I was in Robert's study and I saw a picture of a man that I had never seen before. Is it someone from our family? A picture? You shouldn't have entered that room, Samuel. Robert does not like anyone to go in there, not even me. I merely tried to find something that would help us figure out where Robert could be. His things are all in order. Oh, good. He would be angry if he found out that you had been in his study. That picture is a portrait of our ancestor, Lothar Gordon. It was he who founded the sanatorium where Robert works. And when was that? Some 200 years ago. I'm not exactly certain. Ashbury has been a hospital of some kind for quite some time. Hmm. Tell me more about Lothar Gordon. He was chief doctor in a hospital for the mentally disordered for many years. In those days, however, they did not speak about therapy or medication. He would probably have carried on with his work if he had not fallen ill. What was his ailment? Over time, that place completely absorbed him. All those mad minds that he was spending days and nights with. In the end, he broke down, and his mind succumbed to insanity too. He died as one of those he was helping. A truly sad end. When Lothar died, where did they bury him? I see you are testing my memory. As far as I know, his body remained there as he wished. They buried him in a modest grave behind the sanatorium. Later, that place turned into a graveyard. Many who died within the walls of the sanatorium found their rest there. 
Would you please excuse me now, Samuel? It's Samuel Gordon. Please, open the gate. Lewis Bate, 1852. Evelyn, our dear daughter, buried before her 12th birthday. Let her soul find the resting place it couldn't have in this world. An unmarked grave. The Gordon coat of arms. That's likely the grave I'm looking for. I need to remove the shrub first. Gardening scissors. I hadn't noticed it before. Damn, it's broken. The lid is too heavy. I cannot move it. A metal rod. I'll take it. Oh no, the grave is empty. How do I obtain the fourth key? I can't stop now. I must carry on.
May I speak with you? Sure. Tell me, the old graveyard at the back of the sanatorium, has it always been administered by Ashbury? Yes, as far as I know, it has belonged to Ashbury for at least the past hundred years. And before that? Prior to that, it was part of the Wormhill Parish, I believe. But as I said, that was a very long time ago. Thank you. That's enough. So, the old graveyard was administered by the Wormhill Parish. Hmm. That's all. Thanks. Father Frederick? Yes? Can I speak with you? Certainly, my son. I am listening. I need to research one of my ancestors. Can you help me? I would be happy to help you. But... I sense that something is troubling you. Would you like to discuss it? You would relieve your soul, believe me. You are kind, Father, but I have come for a different reason. I promise, I will return again when I have finished what I must. Very well, then. What do you require from a servant of the Lord? I need to figure out where the remains of Lothar Gordon are preserved. I suspect there might be a record of it in the Chronicle of the Parish. Hmm. Our chronicles reach far into the past. I believe I should be able to find the information you need. Please, come back later. It's going to take me a while to locate the record. Thank you, Father. Father? Yes, my son? Can I disturb you for a moment? Have you found anything in the old chronicles yet, father? It's very important to me. Not yet. You need to be patient, my son. Hmm. Father, I need to talk to you. Yes, go ahead. Have you found anything in the old chronicles yet, Father? It's very important to me. Not yet. You need... Hmm. Father, I need to talk to you. Yes, go ahead. You ever... I found the record you need in the Chronicle. Lothar Gordon was the father of Thomas Gordon, who was the father of William. His remains were buried near Ashbury, as per his last wishes. In Ashbury? After some time, however, his body was cremated and transferred into one of your family tombs in the graveyard of the vicarage. That is where it is resting now. Thanks, Father. You have been a great help. You need not thank me. I am happy to have a look at the Chronicles. in the crypt.
Is anyone there? Who's there this late at night? Is it you? What are you doing here? I know this is not exactly the right hour to take a walk around the graves, but I have my reasons. Yeah, you've probably got some real good reasons. I'm looking for Lothar Gordon's remains, and this is the last possible place. I would like to have a look inside. It won't take long. No, I won't let you in at this time. I've got my work to finish. Come by tomorrow and you can spend however long you want inside. I have to finish my work, so I'll be going back to it. Hold on. We can certainly find a way to settle this. I'm listening. You can go down and see if you can find the urn for me. It's very important, and you won't lose out on it. Let me get this straight. You come to a cemetery after midnight to dig up an urn in the tomb of some ancestor of yours, and you will pay me to help you find it? Exactly. It's got to be very important indeed, as far as I can tell. To hell with it. I'll go and find it for free. So, whose urn is it that you want? Lothar Gordon's. It must be somewhere in the crypt. Okay. Wait here. It's going to take me a while to find it. Sure. You were right. I've found it. Here you are. Now I've got to get back to work. You've cost me a lot of time already. I would still like to go to bed today. I'll leave you to your work. Good. The sooner I get to my bed, the better. Just one more key left. Williams. There's only one way to obtain it. I fear the thought, but I have no choice. I must finish what I have begun. God forgive me. The flashlight might come in handy in this darkness. The ground hasn't hardened yet. What is it I am saying? The ground hasn't... What is... It's too dark. A shovel is lying on the heap.
got to get rid of the gravedigger fast. It's holding the metal door open. Peg is holding the door open. He won't be getting out easily. Forgive me, William. I had to do it. Fifth key, the last one. Hmm, our carriage. Somebody must have come to the vicarage. Victoria? Hmm, I'll have a look in the church. That was Bates. What is he doing here? Why did he go to the confessional in such a hurry? I must find out somehow. Someone is coming. Most likely Father Frederick. I heard footsteps a minute ago. Did someone come in before you? I didn't see anyone. You must have heard me. Hmm. Perhaps you were right. Is there some way I can help you? No, Father. Thank you. In that case, I will depart. secret. I know who has caused all this evil. I know who killed those people. I can no longer bear keeping this secret to myself, so I must confess. I saw him sneaking through the night, covered by the darkness. His palms, they were stained with blood. A terrible sight. I hid quickly so that he would not see me. When I briefly looked into his face, I was stunned with awe. I still have his expression before my eyes. All this time, I remained silent. I could not tell anyone. They would not believe me anyway. Even I would not believe it if I had not seen his face with my own eyes. I am afraid of pronouncing his name, Father. Do go on, son. I know the devil has many faces. That night I saw one of them. The face was that of the Lord of Castle Black Mirror, the youngest of the family, Samuel Gordon. That must be the hair of the murderer. The murderer has black hair.
kept us saying that he hadn't killed him. That's what he was saying. He said he knew who killed him. That he knew. Of your blood, others will rise with your name, bearing my curse. One of your heirs will convert five souls of five mortals. This will be the catalyst to bring my anger back to life. And I will return. When your days have ended, there will be no one to stop me. God, forgive him his sins. Forgive me, my lord, for my sins, and give me strength to carry on. Give me strength to stand up to evil and destroy the curse that has harassed my family for so long. Give me strength, my lord. Amen. There's only one way from the quiet areas of the church. I must descend into the depths of the catacombs and destroy the source of evil that has taken over my soul. Some strange symbols in a circle. Hmm. The underground certainly had a different purpose in the past than just to keep the water away. symbols. They led me as far as here. These must be the catacombs that Marcus's chronicle mentions. I am filled with distress. I don't know what the writing means. Maybe it warns against entering. something in the distance.
can't be opened. There's no lock on it. A little opening in the wall. Something is missing there. What a fight that must have been. Several bodies are spread all over the corridor. Can't see the bottom.
Where am I? What is this place? Vorpal, an ancient ritual dagger. The blade is covered with dried blood. Vorpal, the blade. Zodokare pusadire im coraxo zodere matorebe matoribi vax da sobra ve maliore vax da sobra malior im ibute amena vi busatire amena vax zodokare. shadow over me. My soul has blackened from sins that cannot be undone. Evil has many faces, many forms. I know that the past has been a diverted mirror of my soul. Here, there is no judge to pass judgment. There is only me. 